Colorado High School Activities Association football is on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network tonight from Scott Bluff High School. It's the opening game of the 2021 season as the Fort Morgan Mustangs take on the Scott Bluff Bearcats along with Brian Nicko. I'm John Beltran. Brian, it's a long time in waiting. It was a November afternoon in Johnstown. We were there for the opening round of the playoffs, which was a state quarterfinal against Roosevelt. The Mustangs were literally seconds away from pulling off a 16 to 14 victory. They lost that game 17 to 16. They graduated the beef of their line, but they bring back some very good skill position players, including a three-year starting quarterback going into today. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a big positive for the Mustangs. And uh, they've got some beef up front there. They got the Pax Paxton brothers that'll be up there on the offensive line. And I think Jesse Camp is going to be on the line now. Daniel Serna. Yep. So, uh, but you've got your, you know, your seniors out there in your skilled position. Frankie Ortega is going to be back out there. Braden Fajardo is going to be out there. Fernando Marquez. Um, so. Briggs Wheatley. Briggs Wheatley. That's the one I was referring to. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. setting it up for you, but but I figured I figured you'd mention it. But either way, hey, this is game one for That's us, right. too. That's it's right. Game one for us, so I don't even know what, what's going on here. But I'll tell you what, what a gorgeous night here in Scott's Bluff. The game time temperature is, let's see, we're going to get a reading here right now, 86 degrees, and it feels cooler than that, Brian. Yeah, it does. It feels it feels nice. They got some it's a little bit of cloud cover right now, so behind us anyway with the sun so it's going to be a beautiful night here in scott's bluff yeah without a doubt and uh really no wind to speak of either i mean yeah. there's a little bit that that flag was limp about 15 seconds ago and now it's picked up a little bit but the, the flag off to our left uh that that is pretty limp and maybe because it's a bigger flag too so it's going to take a lot for uh you know for anything to be affected by the flight of the football if it if it stays that that's that tame right. at this point well the mustangs coached by ty davies the assistants are jacob blunt tanner campbell drew davies gary davies jim krekemeyer ron eccles josh langford tyrone ortiz eric sherman seth wolf so it's the same coaching staff the difference isaac linker oh, the yeah. predecessor to briggs wheatley is now on the staff in place of alex mine so that's a solid addition for fort morgan oh yeah that's uh That'll be a big help for him there, especially coming in at the quarterback position or a defensive back, whichever he wants to help out there with. That'll be a big, big positive there for the Mustangs. Mustangs are dressed in their road whites with the black helmets and Scott's Bluff emerging from the back of their big sign there. They'll break through that sign with the red jerseys and the white helmets, the white numerals and the white pants. They are coached by Judson Hall. Scott's Bluff was really good two years ago. In fact, they handed Sterling their only loss of the season, and Sterling won the state title of that year in 3A. Yeah, and that was two years ago. What were they, 5-5 five and five last year or something? They were a 500 or... team around 500 a year ago. And, yeah, let's see if I can pull up the official record for Scott's Bluff from the 2020 season. But I know they were... Definitely weaker last year as opposed to the 2019 season. And they played, uh, yeah, they were exactly 5-5. Five and five. That's pretty impressive. They played a full schedule. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. They started off on August 28th. Colorado oh. football didn't start till October the 10th or 9th. Yep. So, I mean, we know that varied from state to state in terms of the COVID situation. Hopefully we get a 10-game season in this year. I know things are starting to rise again, but hopefully we can keep it under control and get 10 games in this year and get into the playoffs starting in November. So I'm impressed here by the crowd here at Scott's Bluff, the high school band. Yeah, they've got things going here. This is a big-time program. At least a, they put it on like a Class A affair. This yeah. is not a game. This is an event here in Scott's yep. Bluff. Yep. And I think that's probably the way it is in uh, Nebraska. Any yeah. football, kind of like Texas football. I was going to uh, say, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, you, they don't they don't have a pro team that the, you know the Broncos are their closest pro team really. So Nebraska Cornhuskers in college, and then each little town got their own football team, and they're supported well. I didn't set it as a rule, but I pretty much adopted that I'm not allowed to live in a state without 
at least one pro sports team. <laughs> so Georgia, Florida, Louisiana with the Saints, and then of course Colorado's got four of them. So not that that makes the state any lesser for me, but uh, I mean I like having vicinity-wise a team in the state. Right. You know, at least not too far away. So anyway, nonetheless, the captains already have met at midfield. The Mustangs were four and two in 2020. And that included a loss to Roosevelt in the state quarterfinals and one regular season loss to Meade. They made it in as the eighth seed. They've qualified for the playoffs in each of Ty Davies' three seasons as head coach. But Brian, they're looking to get over the hump. 0-3 in the playoffs. Yeah, they've got to. Uh, this This is going to be the year they're going to need to do it because, you know, yeah, they're this, next this is their, their senior laden here with their backs and their ends and, and, uh, deep and uh, running backs. So this is going to be the year. And maybe that loss to Roosevelt in the playoffs is something that will you know, kick them in gear. They, you know, that's that's going to sting on them, and they want to they want to improve on that. Without a doubt, the Mustangs will kick it off. And let's see who's kicking this year for Fort Morgan. And that looks like Austin and Rodriguez back to receiving. Had a 45, which what? we don't have on the roster. That's what I thought too. Yep, it's a 45, and we don't have that on the roster. Yeah, and we got the official roster for the school. Well. <laughs> It is game one. That kick is high and right down the middle. Fielded at the 14-yard line. Straight ahead to the 20. There's a seam to the outside to the 35. Breaking a tackle across the 45 to the 48. It's a return of 34 for Jackson Austic, A 6'2", 165-pound senior. And good field position already for Scott's Bluff on the opening play of the season. The opening kickoff brought to you by High Plains Bank, your friendly local community bank serving Wiggins and all surrounding areas. Find out more at highplainsbank.com. First and 10, four yards behind center is Braden Stoll. And he is gonna give it off to the back and that's a huge hole across the 45 of Fort Morgan to the 42. It's a gain of 10. And a first down for Sebastian Boyle, only a sophomore. Ryan, not a good sign there, the first two plays of the game. No, no, they've got to get things tightened up here right away. Or it's going to get away from them. It's only the third, second play from scrimmage, but they've got to tighten things up. That was a simple counter play. The running back to the left of the quarterback, five yards behind center. There's an end around, so to speak, there across the 40, and his helmet went down to the ball carrier at the 38-yard line. Let's see who carried that football. And that was Jose Rodriguez. Levi McCoy makes the hit. It's a gain of five. Second down and five. Lining up near that left hash mark, which would be there, but there are no hash marks really on the field. Second down and five. Out of the gun from the 37-yard line. There's the counter to Boyle, breaking a tackle at the 35, and he drives towards the first down marker. He's right there. It's a gain of five. Looks like a first down. Two carries now for 15 yards, and the tackle was made over there by, looked like Aiden Derby. Aiden Derry, excuse me, a junior. First down and 10. They're moving quickly, and they're just going to run the ball if Fort Morgan can't stop them. Yep. Yeah. Sitting yeah. just inside the 33, we'll call it the 32-yard line. Same formation, everybody bunched in tight. First and 10 for the Mustang, 32. Back to throw, looking, plenty of protection, rolling out to his right. Here comes the pressure, evading the pressure is along the right sideline and out of bounds across the 25 is Austic. Oh man, the Mustangs are Braden Stoll, excuse me. They had Stoll momentarily in that pocket. He's out of bounds at the 26 for a gain of six. And it's second down and four. Well, that secondary for Fort Morgan is really, really solid. And there was nobody open there. The problem was is that they couldn't get to the quarterback. Yes, couldn't get the pressure on him. Second down and four from the 26-yard line and bobbling the snap and now trying to run out of it as Stoll. He's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Excellent play. A couple of Mustangs were there, including Derry. And also on the play was Daniel Serna. No gain. Third down and four to go. 
and that was simply because of the bobbled snap and this is obviously four down territory but they've still got an extra down to play with and they're not taking any time in that huddle right up to the no. line of scrimmage third and four for the Mustang 26 right hash mark there's the direct snap the hand off to Boyle and he breaks out of a tackle first down across the 20 maybe to the 19 and the first hit was made by Levi McCoy but it's a gain of six and for Sebastian Boyle he's got three carries for 21 yards and this offense is very simply run Brian yeah yeah it's just the kind of a counter is all they're doing right now and they're getting the blocking up front so Fort Morgan's gonna have to uh, tighten up that front line or bring in a 5-2 defense are on that front first and 10 at the 20-yard line of Fort Morgan two receivers split out to the left one to the right receiver now off to the right man in motion to the left and there's the give on the end around swinging it to the outside breaking a tackle and now down at the 19 that's a good play penetration initially by Derry as the ball carrier was Jackson Ostick who had that 34 yard kickoff return Mosquito also in on the play they'll call it a gain of two to the 18 second down and eight to go and even though they've been moving the football Fort Morgan can execute that red zone defense well that could change things here a bit yep. Again, two receivers this time to the left. Nobody to the right. Out of the gun. And there's the give right side to the 15 along the right sideline to the 10. McCoy's there to make the tackle at the seven yard line. There's a flag down though. That looks like it's going to be holding. I think that might have been Rodriguez on the carry and it will be a hold. Yeah, there was a reason that it opened up on the right side. So nullify the gain of about 10. In fact, that might have been Tyson Klein. And that's going to change the whole drive, and they're going to have to throw the ball. And if Fort Morgan can get some pressure on this quarterback, you know the secondary is really solid. Ball's back inside the Mustang 28-yard line. So now it's second down and 18 yards to go. A short 18, if you can call it that. 8.52 to go in the opening quarter. First possession of the game. Two receivers split to the left once again. The running back off to the left of the quarterback in the shotgun. Four yards behind center. Five-step drop. Looking. Throwing over the middle. Incomplete. Nice. Oh, nearly interference there. Boy, that was tight coverage yes. underneath to Jose Rodriguez. And the coverage very tight there by Daniel Sayre. Now, you want to make sure you don't want to pick up a yeah. penalty there, even though it's not the same rule as the NFL or college football. It's not an automatic first down, Brian, but still, that would have given him an extra down. Yep. And yeah. it's third down. Now it's third down and 18. Yeah, that was a second and 18 play. That's officially the first pass of the game. Third and 18 for the Mustang, 28. Hard count, three-step drop. Backside pressure, runs by McCoy. Now stole to the 25, cuts it back oh. to the 20. And he's going to be wrapped around and thrown down at the 15. Some nifty moves. Frank Ortega was able to make the tackle, but it's a gain of 13 for Braden Stoll. He was in big time trouble, got out of it, and now in a fourth and five, I doubt we'll see the field goal unit in here. I think they're gonna go for it. Yeah, I think they will too. They're gonna McCoy came in so fast, Brian, that all still had to do was spin. Yeah. You know, sometimes you want to control how fast you're moving if you're a defender because he had a clear shot on the quarterback. Fourth down and five for the Mustang 15, under eight minutes to go. Opening quarter, no score. Everybody bunched in tight. On a fourth and five, maybe a hard count. Stole this time, we'll hand it off to Boyle, right side, back towards the middle. Held up at the 11, he's gonna be short. Yep, he's driven like back. It. A gain of four, but they needed five, and the Mustangs hold the Bearcats. And there was a dog pile, kind of must of Mustangs. There's some on the ground and some on their feet to make the play. And despite the fact that they had great field position at the 48 yard line, and move the ball 41 yards. They needed 52, so Fort Morgan yep. takes over at their own 11-yard line. So the defense stiffened when it had to. They run that. They had run that same play before, and Fort Morgan stuffed it on that one. Mustangs run more of a pistol here, and that's what they're going to do. Ortega is behind Briggs Wheatley, a receiver to the left, two to the right. First and ten from the 11-yard line. Wheatley awaits the snap. There it is, and he's going to hand it off to Ortega, and he jitterbugs his way to the right side across the 10 to the 13 for a gain of two before he's tripped up there. 
And a play made by Josiah Mobley, a 6'1", 180 pound junior. Second down and eight to go for Fort Morgan. Both teams running quickly here. The inside receiver to the right is Braden Fajardo. Marquez out there as well to the left. Second and eight for the 13. You know the Mustangs can throw the ball. They demonstrated that beautifully last year during the abbreviated season. Ortega now lines up to the right. Trips to the right. Naked backfield. Wheatley, four yards behind center. Has the football. Three-step drop. Looks. Pumps. Now he's got to run out of trouble. Stops. Now he's going to get pressured, and he's going to be taken down at the line of scrimmage. Take it down at the line of scrimmage. Nobody was open there for Fort Morgan. Nice job of Wheatley getting back to the line yeah. of scrimmage. Thus, it wasn't really a sack. But nonetheless, it's a third down and eight with 6.43 to go. First quarter, no score. Yeah. Scott's Bluff did a nice job on, uh, on the receivers that time to bottle everything up. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right on third and eight for the 13-yard line. Awaiting the snap. Wheatley, low snap, going to roll to his left. Pressure coming backside, and he's going to throw it on the run incomplete. That's a good throw there by Wheatley to throw it incomplete because if not, he would have taken a sack back at the three-yard line, Brian. So that is a quality incompletion for Fort Morgan. Yeah, Briggs Wheatley, he's a smart individual, that's for sure. He's got a good head on his shoulders there. He could feel that pressure coming from his backside and got rid of it before he went down. Alan Nevadis is the punter for Fort Morgan. He is two yards deep in the end zone. This is going to be great field position. Jose Rodriguez back deep to receive unless Nevadas can unleash a beauty here. And it's so much pressure on the long snapper, Jose Mosqueda. You don't want a safety immediately if he snaps it too high. That is a little bit of a high snap. He comes down with it. And a nice fluttering punt. Rodriguez is going to fair catch it nice. at the 48-yard line. That's a heck of a punt. That goes for 41 yards. And again, good field position, nearly the same exact field position Scott's Bluff had their, on their first possession. Yep. Yeah, that was a beautiful punt. Had that float in the state of, had good air uh, hang time. By the time he was ready to catch it, he was had somebody in his face. Bank of Colorado is the only bank dedicated to help you to make help you make the most of living here, not just a bank in Colorado, Bank of Colorado, proud supporter of local sports and academics. First and 10 for the 48. Play action, rolling right of stole. Pressure coming, throws, and a pass is oh. he almost intercepted at the 42. Oh, man, in and out of the hands of a Mustang. And that was Brayden Fajardo. Looked like he had it right there. I think I saw 33 and not 23. 33, yep. And it's second down and 10, but that was nearly picked off. Had a little pressure that time, flushed him out of the pocket. Second down and 10 for the 48. Again, five yards behind center. Handoff on the counter. Rodriguez running back towards the middle across the 50 to the 47. That's a gain of five. And again, a big hit there by Daniel Serna. And it will be third down and five yards to go. 5.48 to go first quarter. I'm John Beltran with Brian Nickel. Brian, having a good time? I'm having a wonderful time. It's as great. As long as the Mustangs are either right here at 0-0 zero, zero, or they take the lead. Yep. It's really hard yes. to top the game we did last November. That 17-16 was a yep. classic yep. even though they lost. Third down and five for the 47. Running back to the right of the quarterback who's going to roll out to his right. He's going to throw in the run. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver at the 38-yard line. That would have been a first down. But it was dropped by the tight end Trevor Schwartz. And it'll be fourth down, and Braden Stoll is 0 for 3. Yeah, you got the he, was, uh, he got the ball there. It was a little low. The guy, the uh, receiver went down, but he hit him right in the hand. So. Fort Morgan's got to make sure they don't fall. He's going to hard counter it here. They're going to go for it, but I don't think he's going to snap it. Fourth and five, Fort Morgan's got to make sure they don't go off sides. Yeah. No, okay, there's going to be the punt. I thought they are going to go for it there. The punter wasn't too far back. And that's going to be fielded at the 16-yard line. Running right to the 20s, Fajardo. And he spins across the 30 to the 33. The quarterback was the up guy there, Brian. So I was thinking oh, sure. they might do something tricky there and try to get Fort Morgan on a hard count. Nonetheless, the punt goes for 33 yards in the return for about 16. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 34-yard line, second possession. And much, much better field position than they had 
on their opening drive. Yeah, Scott's Bluff only took a minute off the clock on that possession. Yeah, they did. Well, I mean, they don't take any time. No. They really don't take any time in that huddle. Took a little over four minutes on that first drive, but Fort Morgan came up strong on this second possession of the Bearcats and got the ball back. Excellent field position. When it comes to experience, Buildings by Design is the very best in the business. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. That is Buildings by Design. First and 10, Fort Morgan at their own 34 with 5.14 to go in the opening quarter. And this Scotts Bluff crowd is, they're getting into this game for the opener of the 2021 season. The Mustangs have two receivers out to the left out of the pistol formation. Wheatley awaits a snap, Ortega's right behind him. In motion is Fajardo to the right. There's a flag down handoff to Ortega and he barely gets out of the backfield to the 35. Might have been a legal procedure against Fort Morgan. Yeah, because if they'd been offside, they'd have stopped the play, so. Yep. yep. Five yards back for the Mustangs. Second and 10, Mustangs. Nope, first and first and 15, 15 yeah. Not too many penalties so far, Brian. They had a big one against, the biggest penalty, uh, penalty of the game so far was that holding against Scott's Bluff on their opening drive. That really stalled the drive, and then on a fourth and five, they picked up four yards, giving the ball back to the Mustangs. First and 15 from their own 30-yard line, approaching the five-minute mark of the first quarter from Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. This team from Fort Morgan, Colorado. A playoff team from a year ago, from the last three years. Wheatley awaits the snap, the senior quarterback. Play action, looks to throw. He throws along yeah. the sideline, caught by Ortega at the 40, by himself at the 20. Defender at the 10 in pursuit. Touchdown, touchdown, 70 yards. Holy Mahungus. Wheatley to Ortega, and the Mustangs with 4.59 to go in the opening quarter. Lead the Bearcats six to nothing, and there was nobody within 10 yards of Frank Ortega out of the backfield. He was unaccounted for. Yeah, he came out of there on a uh, wide receiver out here, basically, and he got past the defense, put his hand up, and Briggs saw him, laid it right in there to him. I mean, that was crazy that he was totally uncovered, completely uncovered. Now the extra point to be attempted by... <laughs> 4-5, who we do not have on this particular roster. Awaiting the snap. And the kick is up. That is a beauty, man. That is good from about 45 yards. And that is good. The Mustangs take the early lead on the 70-yard touchdown pass from Briggs Wheatley to Frank Ortega on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Another high kick dropped at the 13-yard line and picked up. And Ostick's got a huge hole along the left sideline to the 35. He stiff arms a defender and a shirt tail down at about the 44-yard line. Another big return. And the tackle was made over there by Charlie Langford. Now, if there's a flag back at around the 18-yard line, Brian, this one could be coming back. Looks like it. Looks like he should be. Looks like it might be coming back. Be a hold in the on the return. He had dropped it initially, picked it up, and then started running. But it looks like it's coming back. Well, that's a second huge penalty against Scott's Bluff here in the first quarter. The Mustangs on a 70-yard touchdown pass from Wheatley to Ortega. He really threw it only about 15, 20 yards, Brian. He was so open yeah. along the right sideline, and Ortega was not going to be caught there. The only way he was going to be stopped is if he tripped on the turf. Yeah, illegal block in the back. First and 10 at the nine. That's a 35 yard difference in field position. Out of the gun. At the five yard line is the quarterback Stoll. Awaiting the snap, the running back Boyle is to his right. Boyle has the football running left on the counter. It's got a big hole and he's got a first down or close to it though. Tackled at the 18, a gain of nine. Initial penetration by Jesse Campa and Braden Fajardo made the hit. Second down and one yard to go. And Sebastian Boyle's got 34 yards on five carries. Yeah, he's got some pretty nifty moves inside there. Sidesteps real, real well. 
Second down and one for the 18. More or less, this will be a handoff, and it'll be a quarterback keeper. That's a first down. Back to the middle, and breaking a tackle still on his feet. Mustang joined for the ball across the 35 to the 36. It's a gain of 18 yards. Fort Morgan not tackling well. And getting up off the bottom of the pile to make the hit for Fort Morgan was Jose Mosqueda, but Boyle once again is up to 52 yards. Yeah, they're getting some yardage, but uh, once they got down into the red zone, they Mustangs did a good job. So basically from the 50 to the 10-yard line, they're doing a good job. Uh, they're letting it in, but not getting into the end zone. And a low snap and falling of the ball is stole. It was snapped to his left. Remember, he's out of the gun, and he falls on the ball at the 30. Well, that's going to be a loss of close to six. Yep. Big break for the Mustangs, but they've, now they've had three big breaks. Two penalties, and then that mishap. Second down and 16 to go. Yeah, they're going to be forced to throw the ball. They're going to contend with that Mustang secondary. From their own 30, stole on the end around. That is Rodriguez across the 35, and then he is hammered at about the 36-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. David Keller, a junior, he's a solid football player, along with Jesse Camp on the hit. They'll call it the 35, third and about 11. Rodriguez now with three carries for 16 yards. They've got to get just past the 46. Third down. And 11 to go for Scott's Bluff. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. One setback. Stola awaits a snap. Five-step drop. Has protection. Now he's going to run out of it. He's got a huge gap across the 40. First down at the 45 in the Mustang territory now at about the 48-yard line. A big gainer. He might have got to the Mustang 45. It's a gain of 20 yards and a first down. And Braden Stoll. Has got four carries now for 39 yards, and the Mustangs have got to contain when he's back in the pocket. That's a big yep. play for Scott's Bluff. Yeah, it was wide open on that right side there. Everybody had gone downfield, and they didn't, uh, that defensive end over there didn't hold his position. Sebastian Boyle checks in late. First and 10 at the Mustang 45. The drive start at the nine. The ball is dropped again. That snap was not bad, but that one, the quarterback had to fall on again, and I'm not sure why. He doesn't just pick it up and yeah. continue the play. It's a loss of five. Second down and 15, 2.15 to go. Opening quarter, Fort Morgan leads seven to nothing on a 70 yard connection from Briggs Wheatley to Frank Ortega along the right sideline. Back at the line of scrimmage, out of the gun. There's the end around to Rodriguez. He gets around a Mustang at the 45-yard line, cuts it back in, and nice. that was a form tackle at the 43. Wow, what a nice play there. That is, that Frank Ortega yep. made that play. It is yep. a gain of seven, but that looked like a wrestling move. Yeah. Third down and eight yards to go. They'll call it the 48. Uh, check it, the 43. But again, third down defense is going to be key right now. Very quick moving first quarter. We've had very few passes. The one for Fort Morgan, or the second one, did go the distance. On third down and seven to go. Check it, eight to go for the 48. Trips to the right. Rolling right is stole. He's got plenty of running room. Throws underneath. It's caught <laughs> short of a first down. That's a big lick delivered by Mosqueda at the 40-yard line for a gain of three. Ostick made the catch, but he was clubbed out there. That's a nice yeah. hit, Brian. Yeah, that was a beautiful hit over there. First completion yeah. of the game for Braden Stoll. We're inside of 50 seconds to go. 5-0 here in the first quarter. They're going to go for it. Fourth down. And a short five to go inside the Mustang. 40. Again, out of the gun. Sebastian Boyle, the running back to the left. And there's the keeper by the quarterback. He's got an easy first down. He's going to have a lot more. Inside the 35 to the 30, a gain of 10. A touchdown saving tackle, perhaps, by Fernando Marquez. And Braden Stoll has 49 yards and carries in the opening quarter. Fort Morgan's got to find a way to contain him. Yep. He looks kind of like, a, well, he doesn't look like him, but he actually, he does what Briggs Wheatley does. When they yeah. need that yardage there, they let their quarterback pick it up. 
So far, they have traveled 61 yards on this drive. First and 10 at the Fort Morgan 30. Out of the gun. Play action. Stole to throw. Here comes the pressure. Runs to his right. Plenty of running room. Across the 30 to the 25. And then he's tackled at the 23 by Jose Mosqueda. And that is the end of the opening quarter. It's a gain of seven for Braden Stoll. Big first quarter for him. However, the Mustangs have the early lead. It's Fort Morgan seven, Scotts Bluff nothing on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran with Brian Nickel here at Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Fort Morgan leads seven nothing going into the second quarter. 72 yards for Fort Morgan, Brian, in the opening quarter, 70 on one play. Yeah. Scotts Bluff with 144, but they're down by a touchdown. Second down and three for the 23 handoff. Boyle, right side, breaks out of a tackle, dragged down from behind, right at the first down marker. At about the 20 yard line, that is Aiden Derry, the junior, who made the play. But the gain of three is gonna be enough for a first down. Looks like you're gonna measure. Yeah, but I think he's got yeah, it here. It's I think he's got it. They might as well just give him the first yeah, down. They're they better off giving him the first down there for Sebastian Boyle. Seven carries for 55 yards. Right up to the line of scrimmage. Again, red zone defense has got to come through for Fort Morgan. First and 10 for Scott's bluff of the Mustang 20. Hard count. There's the handoff to Rodriguez. Back towards the middle. A hole to the 10. And he's breaking free and he's down inside the 10 to about the five yard line, a gain of 15 before he's tripped up by Braden Fajardo and it's first and goal for Scott's Bluff. They might go the distance here. They've traveled 86 yards so far. Yeah, he finds that hole and he gets right through it in a hurry. First and goal at the five and the Mustangs have no answer for this running game so far. Hand off Boyle right side and he's hit at the four. It's a nice tackle around the ankles for a gain of about one. Ball by six. Oh, who got him there? That's a great form tackle. By David, Keller. David Keller, the junior. No surprise there. They give him two yards. Second down and goal from the three. Over one minute into the second quarter. The Mustangs with a seven nothing lead, but the Bearcats are knocking on the door. Out of the gun, Boyle to the right of Braden Stoll. He'll take it himself back to the middle. He spins and scores. Three yards away for Brayden Stoll, the Scotts Bluff quarterback. His seventh carry of the game goes for a touchdown. And it's now Fort Morgan seven, Scotts Bluff six with the extra point to come. Yeah, he's a, he's a load as well as their running back there too, so. Looks like Christian Fees will attempt the extra point. And that is right down the middle, 10.43 to go, second quarter. Fort Morgan 7, Scotts Bluff 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Fort Morgan 7, Scotts Bluff 7, and they're controlling time of possession. A massive drive for Scotts Bluff, Brian. Yeah, it took them uh, 14 plays with 81 yards with Stolt running it in from the three. 91 yards. 91, sorry, yep. Yeah. There's the kickoff, and that'll be fielded on a hop by Ortega at the 10. Running room to the 15, and he cannot get out of a second attempted tackle. He's taken down by a couple of Bearcats just across the 15, and the Mustangs will have a long way to go. And they're going to have to control the ball because they barely had the football, but they are certainly capable of the big play, as we saw on the previous possession. Yep. Yeah, they need to control the ball, keep it away from this offense. First and 10 for the Mustangs. At the 18 yard line on their own side of the field. Two receivers out to the left. The lone setback is Ortega to Wheatley's left awaiting the snap. Wheatley will hand it off to Ortega up the middle. That's a pretty nice hole across the 20 running right side to about the 22, 21 gain of three. Michael Thrash and Jake Abrams made the hit. Well, they give him the 22. Second down and six to go. Again, awaiting the snap there is Wheatley. Now they'll take their time. They'll look over towards the bench. Wind picks up just a little bit. Taking time off the clock. 
Waitley this time will keep it himself. Back up the middle to the 25. Waitley close to the first down marker. And he's tackled by a couple of Bearcats right there at the 28. Very close to a first down. The hit was made by Chen Simons, a 6'3", 235-pound senior defensive end. Okay, they gave him the first down. Yeah, they should. Yep. Gain of six, first and ten for the Mustangs. Well, they need much more of that at their own 28-yard line. Nine and a half to go before the break. We are deadlocked at seven. Two receivers out to the left, one to the right. Whaley awaits a snap once again. And as the Mustangs do with regularity, they look over towards the sideline for play instructions. Play clock is running down. Out of the pistol formation, Wheatley, option right, will pitch it right to Ortega, he drops the ball, and now he picks it back up, and he's got some running room, an, an impressive run by Ortega, and is there a flag down? Yeah, yeah they threw it over here. It was down at about the 34, 35 yard line, but that was a mess. I don't know if you know the real, yep. That's either, that might be a, a formation penalty, yeah. instead of procedure. Why they're not walking that back correctly? Yeah. With 8.58 to go before halftime. Engineering and consulting services for all of your projects. Strong commitment to their clients needs sets them apart. Get your project started the right way. Western Engineering Consultants. First and 15 for Fort Morgan at their own 23-yard line. The Mustangs with a 70-yard touchdown pass from Wheatley to Ortega. Braden Stoll countered with a three-yard touchdown run on a 91-yard drive by the Bearcats. This time Fort Morgan has a couple of receivers to the right on the short side of the field. And one flank to the left on first and 15. Wheatley, play action, looking, setting up deep over the middle. The pass is oh. incomplete, it's dropped near midfield by Marquez. Oh man, that would have been a 27, 30 yard connection in that range. He was covered pretty well, Brian, but he had the ball right in his hands. Yeah, uh, Briggs put it right where it needed to be, out of the reach of the defense, and uh, Marquez just did not come down with it. you got to come down with those. Marquez is a solid receiver. Keep in mind, as a sophomore, he led the conference in interceptions. Had a pick six against Northridge. Again, same formation. Second down and 15 from their own 23 yard line. Under eight and a half to go, second quarter tied at seven. Pressure coming, Wheatley pumps, gonna roll and is gonna be sacked. He's gonna be taken down at the 20 yard line. Too much pressure, had to get rid of that football quickly, couldn't do so. Yeah. It's a three yard loss, it was gang tackled there. One of those was Tyrone Shanks, a 5'10", 185 pound sophomore linebacker. Third down and 18. Can the Mustangs wiggle their way out of this with under eight minutes to go in the opening half? Trips to the left. I mean, they certainly have the, the talent to do so with Wheatley and his receivers. Got to pull a rabbit out of the hat here on third down and 18 from their own 20. Wheatley with a five-step drop. Pressure coming. Goes underneath on the screen. It's caught by Ortega. Back to the middle. And he spun at the 30-yard line and then down at the 34. They got a lot of the yardage back short of a first down. The gain is going to be 15 yards, but they're going to have to punt at a fourth and three. Yeah. I know that Coach Davies might be thinking differently because the defense has been unable to stop Scott's bluff. He doesn't want to give the ball back, no. Brian. Right now, they're, unless he drops back the kick, Briggs is still in there. They're going to go for it. Fourth and three at their own 35. Hard count. They might take a penalty here. Let's see what happens. That's a huge play right now. They actually go yeah. for it on a fourth down and three. I think they're going to operate a hard count and maybe not snap it. Wheatley, again, yeah. trying to run it down, and they're not going to snap this ball. I think that's a smart play by Fort Morgan. Now they've called a timeout, so yeah. they can still have Scott's Bluff think about what's going to happen on a fourth and three, even though they're in their own territory at the 35 with under seven minutes to go in the first half. Right, yeah, you don't want to take that penalty because you can get him now to jump off sides even on the punt and still get that first down. So, smart, 
smart thinking over there by the coaches for Fort Morgan. So, Well, listen, there is no doubt, no doubt that the Fort Morgan offense is ahead of the Fort Morgan defense. Yeah. And it's not even close. Yeah. All right, the Fort Morgan defense right now is getting manhandled, which is why Scott's Bluff has had two very nice drives. One stopped at the 11. Well, actually, they've had, and then the other was a touchdown. The other one, Fort Morgan was able to stop them, but the, yeah. they, they've hit themselves pretty hard. Yeah. What's that whole foot analogy? You know, when you uh, yeah, shoot yourself in the shoot foot. Shoot yourself in the foot. Thank you, Brian. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> the punt for Fort Morgan is Alan Nevarez. Jose Rodriguez back deep to receive. Nevarez at his own 20-yard line. Had an excellent 41-yard punt his first time out. On fourth down and three. I would still love to see Fort Morgan operate a hard count out of this. And just get this team thinking. Snap is perfect. Nevarez booms that football. A spiraling punt. And it's caught on a fair catch. A sliding catch by Rodriguez. At the 32-yard line. The punt went for 33 yards with no return. Punting game looks good so far, Brian. Yeah, yeah, they're... The uh, deep snap is going good. And he's getting time to get the punt off. He hasn't been pressured at all. I don't know if that's just Scott's bluff, not that they're wanting to set up a return or what the deal is, but uh, has a good time to punt and get, has a beautiful punt. First and 10 for Scott's bluff at their own 32. Fort Morgan keep it at 7-7. They receive the second half kickoff. Close to five yards behind center is Braden Stoll. Back to throw. And he's going to heave it up the right sideline. The pass is incomplete. A diving attempt at the 32. Well covered over there. Jose Rodriguez was the intended receiver. And looked like Jose Mosqueda was right there. That would have taken a perfect pass. He's got a nice arm. Yeah, yeah. It was it was almost in there, but uh, who was it? Mosqueda was right in his back back pocket. So he Honest, made, made him work for it a little bit. Sorry, Brian. I'm... I'm surprised they threw the ball in first down. Yeah. As well as they're running it, they can just wear down Fort Morgan easier. They did Fort Morgan a favor there. Second down and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Everybody bunched in tight. There's the counter handoff to Sebastian Boyle. A seam to the outside to the 35. Oh, nearly horse-collared. Close to being horse-collared down right there at the 35. Number six, Sebastian Boyle. And in on the hit was Braden Fajardo. And Timothy Paxton around the football. Third down and seven. That doesn't mean it's going to be a, a passing play either. No, no. Uh, Got to watch Stoll taking off with it. But the Mustang defense that time did a nice job of stretching that out and limiting the yardage. Third and seven from their own 35. Watch out for this quarterback, Stoll. He's got the football. Big hole up the middle. Across the 40. First down. He's into the secondary. And he's all the way to the 47 for a gain of 12. That was very predictable. Yep. Very predictable. Fernando Marquez made the hit. Yeah, when they need the, the third down yardage, they're putting it in the hands of their quarterback, and he's been coming through with it more times than not. 71 yards on eight carries for Braden Stoll. First and 10 from their own 47, 538 to go. Second quarter handoff and a gain of about four, running right side to the 49 of Fort Morgan. That is a rare carry in the game for Jackson Ostick, only a second carry. Mosqueda made the hit. Second down and six to go for Scott's Bluff. And this time they'll take some seconds off the clock. I think they want to score as late as possible, yeah. but they're going to have to slow it down considerably. They've controlled this line of scrimmage. They've controlled the time of possession. Second down, handoff, Boyle. He's hit right there at the line of scrimmage. Boy, tremendous penetration. And nobody... Nobody blocked Aiden Derry. Yep. And then he was held up by other Mustangs. That's a, a loss of one. Third down and seven. Mustangs tightened it up there a little bit. They might have brought a linebacker up there that time. They but did, but yep. this is what they just had. They had a third and seven, and, and you got to watch out for Stall here. Mustangs playing like a 4-4 here. This will be the quarterback Stoll. Yep. He's got huge room across the left side. First down. Tackle from behind. That was too easy to the 39 of Fort Morgan. A gain of 11. 
Yeah, that was just way yeah. too easy. He followed one of his blockers. He gets outside of that mess in, you know, the initial line there, and he's finding all kinds of room. Yeah, that Fort Morgan line is really getting worked over tonight. First and 10 for Scott's Bluff at the Mustang 39. 4.13 to go second quarter, tied at seven. Out of the gun, looking to throw a stole. Plenty of time. Now he's going to be taken down. Aiden Derry was the first man in on the hit. And also for the Mustangs was Randall Paxton. And the loss is back to the 46, a loss of seven. Again, that Mustang secondary covering very nicely and created that sack. And now we're under 345 to go in the second. Yeah, yeah. Stoll, he had a he had a receiver out here wide open, and he just he was Stoll had his vision to the left, or he could have hit this kid over here. Second down and 17 for the Mustang. 46. Hand off to Boyle across the right side, and Aiden Derry again. There's a late flag. I wonder if that's a hold from behind, but it's going to be a loss back to the 48, a loss of two, and the Mustangs should decline that yep. penalty if it's I would think that's got to be against the offense yeah and one of the yep. offensive linemen not happy about that let's see what coach Davies elect to do I would decline that I saw him declining it over on the sideline over there yeah there's no need to you've already got him back this far third down they've got to get to the 29 wow that's at the 48 yard line so that is really way back there now. Third down and 19 to go for Scott's Bluff. This could be a game changer either way. If they pick up five or 10 yards, they're gonna punt, but if they pick up anywhere from 12 to 15 yards, and oh, yeah. they're gonna go for it. Clock yeah. continues to run here. Very quick moving first half. Looks like they're gonna let it run down, call timeout. Because they're not trying to call any play right now yeah that might not be a bad idea as they wait for that back judge to count it down and that's indeed going to be the case with 257 to go the mustangs play their home opener coming up a week from today on friday september 3rd when they take on the Brush Bee Diggers, they're in action tonight against the George Washington Patriots as the stadium's being renamed Larry Mills Field at Bee Digger Stadium, probably long overdue. Yep, yep. Hall of Fame head coach, takes 10 state championship game appearances. They won four titles. So that's part of the dedication tonight in Brush. We are in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. This is about a couple of hours away from Fort Morgan. And a nice way to start the season for the Mustangs with this type of challenge. Yeah. Uh, they, they still will be traveling for other games that are not that close, like at Conifer, Mountain View and Loveland, just at Broomfield and Holy Family, yeah. and then there's another one sprinkled in there. Niwot. Niwot. And, and that, a, that, I believe, is a Thursday night yep. game. And so is the uh, Northridge game at home. Third down and 19 to go for Scott's Bluff at the Fort Morgan 48-yard line. Trips to the left. Stoll is going to roll that way. Here comes some pressure from the backside. He's hit as he throws. That's going to be incomplete, or did he catch it? No. Oh, he did he? No, no, no incomplete. No, no. That was oh, close. man, Rodriguez came back for the ball at the 25. But because the hit was made by the Mustang defender, it was incomplete. Noah Aguirre, a freshman, I believe was the one that made the hit. It was either him or Weedrick, and they laid a stick there. Yeah, that's a huge play there, Brian. Yeah, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, well, he could, he couldn't get into that throw at all. He was being hit when he threw it, but it was almost it was almost caught. But Jardo back deep to receive now. O for a one for six for three yards. Awaiting the snap for Scott's bluff. Light pressure. End over end. Mustang's got to watch out. It doesn't hit a Mustang. That ball's going to roll. Take a huge Scott's Bluff hop to the seven. Wow. I believe that was Christian Padilla. And it was the putter. Yep. Yep. 
Mustang ball, first and ten. That's a that's a tremendous roll there. 41 yards to the seven. Now, what can Fort Morgan do here? Two minutes, 39 seconds to go. They got a couple of timeouts. Well, you think they're going to keep it on the ground, Brian? I mean, there's... Uh, yeah, I would think so. This is either Ortega or Wheatley that will have the football. Naked backfield. For now. From the seven-yard line. Wheatley looking to throw. Throws it over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, behind Marquez but he still should have had it on the slant at the 17-yard line. Marquez has dropped two in the game. Yep, it was it was a difficult catch, but he should have had it. It was right in his hands. Briggs could have uh, led him a little bit better on that one. He was open coming across from the wide receiver position. Well, if he sits there like a slot receiver as opposed to continuing to run to the ball, then he does catch it. Like that you know, a Brandon, Brandon Stokely type of play. Yeah. Second down and 10 to go from their own seven-yard line. Yeah, they're going to be covering Ortega after that 70-yard touchdown connection in the first quarter. Wheatley awaits a snap. And again, he wants to throw. No pressure. Now comes pressure. Throws over the middle. And that is going to be, is it caught by Marquez? That's an incredible catch if you know incomplete. I thought it was incomplete. But it's caught by the back judge or the side judge. It's yeah. an incomplete pass. Now, now what are they saying? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it hit the ground. Two straight incompletions for Wheatley. Yeah, that stops the clock. They've only taken eight seconds off the clock. Wheatley's unofficially two out of six for 85 yards. Third down and 10 to go for their own seven. Scott's Bluff's going to get great field position if Fort Morgan doesn't pick up the first down. Three receivers out to the left. Wheatley is nearly in the end zone, but not quite. Wheatley, quarterback draw to the 10-yard line, breaks a tackle oh, short of a first yeah. down, got to about the 14. And now Scott's Bluff calls a timeout. It's a gain of seven for Briggs Wheatley. Well, it's too bad. Second timeout with 2.19 to go. and This could be the game changer right here, Brian, because yeah. Fort Morgan had it in their control. They could have run some timeout. You pick up a first down. You don't score, but you keep it at 7-7, which they could still do. And them. then you receive the second half kickoff. Yeah. yeah, they came out trying to change it up a little bit, and it cost them. Maybe they can get the hard count and get them off offside and uh, keep the drive going. Two nineteen to go before halftime. Deadlocked at seven. Now the Mustangs will punt and that'll be Alan Nevarez who's been very good so far. Jose Rodriguez is in Fort Morgan territory waiting to receive that punt. A little bit of a drop would help. We've had no turnovers in the game. No. Nope. Mustangs need a turnover right now to reestablish better field position. Max protection on this punt. He's standing at his own goal line. A little bit of a high snap. Gets it off another gorgeous punt. And, and that he's catching it at the 47 and down right there. Rodriguez tackled right at the point of the catch. Perfect timing there. And he's taken down by Charlie Langford, a sophomore. First and 10 at the 47 of Fort Morgan as the punt went for 33 yards. Time for the defense to stand tall again. Well, and they're gonna run the ball, I think. I mean, he's been unable yeah. to pass effectively and he can run. Stoll will hand it off to Boyle, right up the middle, breaks out of a tackle, running behind blockers inside the 45 to the 43. It's a gain of four. They've got to get right back up to the line of scrimmage. They don't have to rush too much. We're under two minutes to go. As Aiden Daria Jr. has been in on a lot of tackles, he makes the hit. Second down and six. The clock now reads one minute and 49 seconds to go. Tied at seven right before halftime. Hard count, and that was a false start by Scott's Bluff. 
And keep in mind in high school football that the clock will restart here. This isn't inside of two minutes in the NFL or something like that where it stops. It'll restart. So now the ball is at the 48-yard line, second down and about 11. There's your clock. Now inside a minute 40 to go before the break. Less than 100 seconds to go. Can the Mustangs play enough defense and keep this game deadlocked at 7? On second down, high snap. The quarterback nice. is hitting the backfield. Oh, tremendous penetration at the 49 for a loss of three. A number of Mustangs there, but that was led by Jesse Kemp of the senior. A three-yard loss, a tremendous play. That's one of the few negative plays for Braden Stoll. And now they're letting the clock roll a little bit because they know they're in a little bit of trouble here. It is third down and 14. We have less than one minute to go before halftime. Out of the gun, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Stoll, back to throw, backside pressure, throws a screen underneath. Caught at the 50-yard line, a seam to the 45 along the right sideline and might have a first down at the 37 by Braden Fajardo, yep. and he does. It's a gain of exactly 14. That was caught over there by Tyson Klein. Well, that changes everything. Yep, had that screen pass, and it worked to perfection for him. But again, they have one timeout. Clock is yet to restart, 46 seconds to go. At the Mustang 37, they've got plenty of time now with that timeout. Stoll looking to throw. Heaves it up the right side. A Mustang defender out there incomplete. Jose Mosquera was actually ahead of Jose Rodriguez. No way he was going to complete that pass. 36 seconds remaining. Second down and 10 at the Mustang, 37. But they do have one timeout. That's the eighth pass thrown by Stoll. He's two out of eight for 17 yards. Yeah, their deep passing game just isn't there. Well, they might go with another screen. Yep. And they've got a good kicker in Christian Fees. They might set up a field goal here before the break. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right. Second down and 10 to go for the Mustang, 37. Rolling to the left is Stoll. And he's got room to run. He's going to take off along the sideline across the 30. Close to the first down marker. He's going to be short of it. Looked like he got to the 30, maybe the 29. It'll be a gain of seven for Braden Stoll. The clock stops. Down at the 30. With 29 seconds to go. Braden Stoll. He's almost at 100 yards, as he will recalculate here. Well, he's at 86 right now. On that left hash mark, not in field goal range yet. Third down, and three to go at the 30. Stoll will hand it off. Right side, big hole to the outside. First down to the 25, and upended at the 23, and that looks like it's Ostick. Yep. It's a gain of seven. Boy, they better call that timeout soon. They're going to get up to the line of scrimmage. Looks to be good for a Bearcat first down. 21 seconds to go, but they might be saving it here for either a field goal attempt or they might throw it in the end zone at some point. 17 seconds to go at the 23. Stall, play action. Got a receiver open in Rodriguez, and it's going to be tipped oh. and incomplete. It was nearly picked off the Mustang defenders. Eventually caught up along the right sideline. Braden Fajardo caught up there. If not, it would have been, it could have been a pick, but initially yeah. it looked like he was open. Yeah, it was just a late pass. He was open, but the Morgan defense closed quickly on it. Is that Jose Mosquito over there too, I believe? He was over there as well. Yep. All right, Brian, this is a big one now. Yep. Second down and seconds. 10. We don't care about the downs because you've got 11 seconds to go at the Mustang 23. They've got to get a little bit closer and call a timeout. Oh, they're going to call their timeout right now, or Fort Morgan calls a timeout. Well, that's a smart timeout yeah. because you don't want to get an offender behind you. You don't want that to happen. Mustangs have one remaining, but their timeouts are really irrelevant at this point. Fill up your cooler, gas up your car, stubs, gas, and oil. Easy and convenient. Makes them the only stop you need on your way to the big game. That is Stubbs, Gas and Oil. 11 seconds remaining before halftime. 
The Mustangs scored in the opening quarter. Scott's Bluff scored their touchdown in this quarter. We'll have a halftime recap. We'll have a halftime show as well. That will include a, a special feature. Not just Brian and I talking the whole time. Yeah, you said special. Yeah, exactly. That's why it wouldn't include us. <laughs> oh, this was a quick moving first half, but the last three, four yeah. minutes have come to a standstill. And you know the long half times in high school football. Second down and 10 to go from the 23 of Fort Morgan. Two receivers split out to the left with one setback. Stoll looks to his left. Pressure coming. He's going to roll to his right, and he's going to have to go out of bounds. Oh, oh he's no. tackled out of bounds. A horse collar. That was not a smart play at nope. all. Nope. Horse collar over there by Timothy Paxton. He had yep. no idea where he was in the field. All he had to do was push him out of bounds. Oh, that was an awful penalty. I don't know what he was thinking. He had no idea. First of all, he was well out of bounds, and then he horse collared him on top of that. Yep. That'll set up a much easier field goal. That would have been a long field goal now. That's going to be half the distance. I mean, Timothy did a nice job of getting him out of bounds, but why continue? He made two huge mistakes. Yeah. Lay off him, and then don't certainly grab him inside the jersey. But, again, it's game one, and every player is going to make a mistake, and every player is going to make a good play, but that's a huge walk-off. Yeah. All the way to the 13. Christian Fees will attempt a 29-yard field goal to give Scott's Bluff the lead on the final play here of the opening half. Hopefully no fake field goal here either or something crazy. Off the hold. The kick nope. is up and it's well off to the left. Not even close. He completely hooked it. Now we've got one second remaining. Oh, he missed it badly. Yep. Badly. 29-yard field goal attempt. And I'm telling you, had that been an extra point and he kicked it that way, he would have hooked that one. Yeah, yeah, that was not good at all. That's what we were looking for Well, last year. Yeah, well, that wasn't going to happen against <laughs> the number one team. And that ball was in the middle of the field. This ball was not middle of the field. And the Mustangs will just take a knee here off the snap. So we are at the top of the hour in Morgan County's B106 KPRB Brush Fort Morgan. And that'll be the opening half. In Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. With the score after 24 minutes of football. It is Fort Morgan 7. Scotts Bluff 7. We'll take a break and come back with a halftime show and a recap of the opening half on Morgan County's B106. B106.com and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Colorado High School Activities Association football is on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network tonight from Scotts Bluff High School. It is the second half after a nearly 71-hour halftime break as the Fort Morgan Mustangs are taking on the Scotts Bluff Bearcats. I had Brian Nickel with me on Friday. I have Kevin Rohde with me here tonight. And Kevin is a defensive guy, so I think he'd be happy that it was a 7-7 game at halftime, even though Fort Morgan gave up over 200 yards of offense and mustered only 89 in the opening half. And I would think, Kevin, it's a 7-7 game. You've been outgained by 100 yards. You've got the extra few days. I think the advantage goes to the team that didn't generate much offensively except that one big play of 70 yards because they've had all this time instead of just one half for 15 to 16 minutes to make adjustments here to the Scotts Bluff offense. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think all the advantages on Fort Morgan's side as far as the 71-hour halftime. Uh, <laughs> number one, if they gain that many yards, and I wasn't at the game and I didn't have a chance to listen to the broadcast, but if they gained that many yards and only scored seven points, then I think what I understand is they made a lot of mistakes. And if they make a lot of mistakes, they're still wearing down your defense as they pound it up the middle and you just can't stop them. And that demoralizes the team. So I think having the 71 hours to reset and not have that physical fatigue of that first half pounding will bode well for Morgan, as well as the opportunity, as you said, to rethink some of the plays and make the minor adjustments that might open up. Without a doubt. And uh, 
the Mustangs could not get the ground game going at all. And normally, in football, the running game sets up the passing game. Kevin, I think it's going to be the opposite this year because they've got a lot of weapons here with Marquez and Fajardo Ortega out of the backfield. Briggs Wheatley, a solid three-year starting quarterback. Sometimes it could be the opposite because that's where their weapons are. I don't know how much that happens now in football, but you would think that probably does because the NFL, for instance, even college football, that's gone to more pass-oriented where the pass sets up the run as opposed to vice versa. Right. I think that's definitely something that we're going to have to look for this year, seeing that, that Fort Morgan is going to have to pass a lot more. So, therefore, the key is going to be will they, the line be able to generate enough time for Briggs to be able to find those three really good receivers and pass to them. The Mustangs got a 70-yard touchdown pass in the opening quarter on Friday from Briggs Wheatley to Frank Ortega. And then uh, Scott's Bluff capitalized a 91-yard drive, just mowing Fort Morgan's defense down the field. Braden stole the quarterback, scored from three yards out. And again, we're tied at seven. Nebraska rules, you can't end a game in a tie, but there should have been a time limit. That's another issue that I talked about on Friday night. They were going to wait all the way till 11 o'clock to get this game in as opposed to what ultimately happened, rescheduling the game and playing the second half coming up tonight. So we'll only be on the air for an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour, unless this game goes into overtime. And then we could have some extended time. But Fort Morgan now has their next game just four days away. So they don't want to be too banged up, Kevin, going into that game against Brush on Friday. That's right. And Brush had a good outing against a division above them, Team George Washington. And had a good showing and were able to secure the victory. And I, I think that's going to bode well for Brush and they're going to have a good season too. Let's take a break. We'll come back with a second half right after this on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with Kevin Rohde here at Scotts Bluff High School where the Bearcats and the Mustangs are tied at seven. Now we head to the third quarter. And now the halftime break, Kevin, is officially 71 hours and one minute. The Mustangs should receive the third quarter kickoff, but I think they had the option to defer. So let's see if that's going to be the case. Because well, I heard something over the PA. There wouldn't be any point in deferring because there's not going to be another half well, exactly. kickoff. Exactly, yeah. You're so. just going to minimize possessions. So take the ball, take your shots, and play some football. That's but they didn't cross for. the 50 at all. They didn't come close to crossing the 50 except on a touchdown pass. So they would just want to get to the 50. And Frank Ortega is back deep to receive. Looks like Christian Fees once again will be kicking off here for Scott's Bluff for the final 24 minutes of game number one. Frizzardo's back deep with Frankie. Bo standing at the 10 yard line. And the second half of the opening game of the football season. Believe it or not, is underway. And that one is squibbed towards the sideline. That ball is loose. Is it going to go out of bounds? It does at the 28-yard line. So the Mustangs will have good field position at the 35 is where they should place that ball. Right. And they'd be wise to take that because that's only 15 yards from that uh, kind of I don't know what you call getting into the enemy territory 50-yard line that you talked about that they didn't reach. Right, that much closer now. 202 yards in the opening half for Scott's Bluff, 89 for Fort Morgan. The Mustangs at their own 35-yard line. Let's see if they get anything going on the offensive end, which they could not establish. Play calling could be a little bit different, too. First and 10, the receiver to the left is Braden Fajardo. Marquez is out to the right. We'll check it. Fajardo and Marquez are now out to the right. One receiver out to the left, out of the pistol, play action, looking to throw deep up the right sideline, incomplete, Marquez was covered tightly at the Scotts Bluff 36-yard line, defended by Renson Wilkins, a senior, and really Briggs Wheatley didn't have much of a pocket to throw into that, and much of a window, and it's second down. Right, and he threw that ball where only his receiver was going to be able to get to it. It was a little bit long, but that's better than a little short when you're in double coverage. Wheatley was two out of six in the opening half for 85 yards in that touchdown. The lone receiver out to the left. Looks like Alex Rivas wearing 23. Yeah, they've got Marquez and Fajardo is now the outside receiver to the right. 
in the slot is Oscar Ramirez and Ortega, of course, in the backfield to the left of the quarterback. Briggs Wheatley on second down and 10. Five yards behind center. Fajardo in motion to the left. Wheatley is going to hand it off to Ortega. Jitterbugging across the 40, and he backs his way across the 40 to the 43 for a gain of eight before the hit was made by Josiah Mobley. A 6'1", 180-pound junior middle linebacker. That's the biggest run Fort Morgan's had. Going right. back to last Friday, a gain of close to eight. Third down and a long two. Yeah, that was really nice misdirection. They got everybody flowing uh, to the opposite side of the field with Fajardo in motion and then countered back. Third and two from their own 43-yard line. Wheatley himself to his right. First down. He's dragged down at the 46 for a gain of three. Once again, making the tackle was Mobley. But Wheatley read it perfectly off right guard. And for Briggs, unofficially, that's his fifth carry of the game. For 16 yards, Ortega had two carries in the opening half for six yards before his eight-yarder. Mustangs right up to the line of scrimmage. Just underway in the opening 45 seconds of the third quarter. Deadlocked at seven. Now Marquez is the outside receiver to the left. With Fajardo out there with him. And again, Alex Rivas to the right. On first and 10 on the right hash mark at their own 46-yard line. It's a warm one tonight. Temperature's well into the 80s here. Wheatley, low snap. Back to throw. Pressure coming up the middle. He's going to run to his right. He's got to get out of it. Now he's going to throw across his body. It's going to be caught by Fajardo at the 41-yard line. What a pass and what a catch. A tremendous play. And that's a gain of 13 yards and a first down. Boy, the athleticism of Wheatley and Fajardo produced a beautiful play right there, Kevin. Yeah, they did. He fought hard to, to find some open spot to throw from. And it's kind of thrown off his back leg across field, neither of which are advised for a quarterback, but it worked out this time. First and 10 for the Mustangs on that left hash mark at the 41. And you described it perfectly across the field. So that was a long throw for 13 yards. Ortega to the right of the quarterback. Man in motion to the right is Fajardo. And he's got it on the end around, looking for a seam to the 40-yard line. Cuts it back to the middle. First down across the 30. He's breaking tackles. And now he's dragged down from behind inside the 10 to about the 7. Let's see. That's where they mark it. Maybe the 6-yard line. It's a gain of 35 for Brayden Fajardo with some nifty running. And again, Fort Morgan not allowing the Scotts Bluff defense to rest whatsoever. Yeah, they're just keeping after him and... Uh... They've got the momentum going, and this, that bodes well for Fort Morgan tonight. The scoreboard says the nine, Kevin. That looks like more like the maybe the eight-yard line. Let's yeah. give them 33 yards. That looks at least closer to the eight-yard line. Quite not the six, or not quite the six. Out of the pistol, first and goal, just inside the eight. Handoff, Ortega up the middle, then he's bottled up at about the five for a gain of three, driven back by a bevy of Bearcats, second and goal. Again, the official gain for Brayden Fajardo on the end around 33 yards. And this is what the Mustangs were hoping for on Friday night. Right, I think they're gonna have tough going inside. It looks like they've got three really decent sized fellows playing nose guard and defensive tackles. So I think they're gonna be better off with misdirection and going outside. Temperature sitting at 84 degrees right now. Second down and goal from the five. Again from the pistol. Wheatley awaits a snap. Has the football. He's going to roll out to his right. He'll throw into the end zone and it is incomplete. Towards the end zone along the sideline to Marquez. Maybe at about the one or two yard line. That's a... A tough play to make. He was blanketed very nicely over there by the Scotts Bluff defender. Third and goal for Fort Morgan. And for Wheatley, that is a sixth incompletion and nine passes. Right. I think at this point you need to you know, go for the goal, but you want to make sure you get some points out of this and break this tie. Now they say the football is at the six. Man, tough to tell from this vantage point. I thought it was touching the five, but we'll go with the scoreboard. Third and goal from the six yard line. Easily field goal range, but the Mustangs want the six right now. Wheatley has the football, play action, looking to throw into the end zone, incomplete. Through the hands of Marquez, he tossed it out to his right near the goal line. The Mustangs are gonna have to settle for a field goal on fourth down and goal, and that was not good, Kevin, inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, that, was, that pass was tipped by the inside linebacker, Jace Wilkinson, for 
Scott's bluff, and so I think the throw probably would have been a little bit better, but got a little change of trajectory there. But you know that that opened up a lot more things for Scott's bluff to have to think about because we had success in the run and in the pass. Um, but you're right, a touchdown would have been much better. An attempt of, let's see, about 22 yards for Brandon Marquez off the hold of Charlie Langford. The snap is low, the kick is up, and the kick barely over the crossbar. It's good. 8.45 to go in the third quarter in Scott's Bluff. And the Fort Morgan Mustangs have their second lead of the game. It's Fort Morgan 10, Scott's Bluff 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. High kick taken by Ostick at the 7-yard line. Across the 20 to the 25, spins out of a tackle! And he's down at about the 35-yard line, a gain of about 30 on that return. Justin Ostick had a big return on Friday night to begin the game. The Mustangs went 59 yards in the drive, a 22-yard field goal by Brandon Marquez as Fort Morgan faltered inside the 10-yard line after a 33-yard run by Braden Fajardo. They lead. The drive took three minutes and 15 seconds. I'm John Beltran with Kevin Rohde. Let's see what the defense does. First and 10, good field position. Again, the Mustangs had it at their own 35 as the Scots Bluff in their first drive of the second half. There's to give the Boyle running left. The flag is down. Marquez has got him around the ankle. And now other Mustangs are able to make the hit back at the 38. That should be an illegal, illegal shift against... Scott's bluff, and that's what happened, Kevin, with yep. not necessarily that. They had holding penalties when they were just shooting themselves in a the foot. Now it's first and 15. That always makes it hard as an offensive coach. You never want your kids making mistakes that put, put you behind on the down and distance. Well, and the Mustangs needed that help on Friday night because they could not stop Scott's bluff, even when it was third and long. Now it's first and 15. Out of the gun. This is the quarterback, Stoll, and he's down after a short gain. Nice penetration. He got to about the 32, maybe the 33. And the first hit from Fort Morgan came from Daniel Serna. They'll give him three yards. It'll be second down and 12 to go. And Stoll, in the opening half, had 86 yards and 11 carries, but only three on that carry. All right. I think Fort Morgan's going to want to just slow the game down, and Scott Bluff's going to want to hurry up a little bit more. Second down and 12, nearly some movement there. Handoff, running right, Boyle slips out of a tackle back towards the middle, and then he's swallowed up at about the 40-yard line, but a nice gain of six yards. Hit along the far side by David Keller, the junior. Boyle now with 67 yards on 13 carries. Third down and six to go from their own 39 yard line four yards behind center there's the give left side back up the middle Rodriguez first down he cut it right back towards the center of the field and that was a solid run and a gain of nine to the 48 yeah they kind of did a little bit of misdirection because Fort Morgan's really trying hard to fly to the ball because that's their best chance against a, a bigger and stronger offensive line and that's where that what's becomes what they're vulnerable to then. 47 yards now for Rodriguez on six carries. Frank Ortega made the hit. First and 10 at their own 48. They'll shift receivers to the left and right. Two to the left and one to the right. Running back off to the right of the quarterback, Braden Stoll. Three-step drop, looking deep up the left side. The pass is going to be nearly intercepted, broken up at the 32-yard line by Ortega. That ball was in the air way too long. And it was intended over there for Mason Kinsey. A junior, check it, a senior at 6'2", 185. And Ortega read that beautifully, Kevin. Yeah, he did. There was a little breakdown on coverage. The corner let him go deep, and there was no one in the flat. And luckily, Frankie was able to get over there and get to that in time. Two out of 10 for 17 yards. Second down and 10 for the 48. There's the give right side, and a nice gain across the 50 to the 46-yard line, a gain of six. That is Tyson Klein with his first carry of the game. Again, Keller, the junior, makes the initial hit, but that's too many yards. Now you set up a very manageable situation. Third down and four, 7.08 to go, third quarter. Fort Morgan on a 22-yard field goal by Brandon Marquez. Leads Scott's Bluff 10-7. First drive for Scott's Bluff in the second half. From the Morgan 46 on the right hash mark. Awaiting the snap. Handoff. Boyle back towards the middle. He is stood up, but he's still driving close to a first down. He'll be short. 
at the 43. It'll be a gain of three. And the tackle was made by Levi McCoy along with Timothy Paxton. Gets them close enough where they're probably, well, they are going to go for oh, it. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's fourth down and a yard to go. They've got to get just inside the 42. They're at the 43. This probably will be stole, I would think, the quarterback. He's going to take it off to his right, first down. He dives across the 40 to the 39. Too easy for him. Excellent blocking on that right side. It's a gain of three officially just inside the 40 of Fort Morgan as the drive continues for the Bearcats of Scotts Bluff. And this third quarter is really moving along. We're almost halfway through the quarter. Just inside the 40 of Fort Morgan. First and 10 for Scotts Bluff. There's the handoff on the end around to the left. That's Rodriguez. He's had big yardage all game long across the 30, and he's down at about the 28-yard line. The tackle was made by David Keller again, but that's way too deep into the secondary. And it's a gain of close to 13 for Rodriguez, and this guy's racking up yards. He's got 60 yards on seven carries, and that little, that little end around of that almost slight reverse is working really well. Yeah, especially when you got Sebastian Boyle, number six, blocking up front for it. He's six foot, 195 pounds, and he's their, their premier running back, and he's blocking up front. From the 27-yard line, this is the handoff to Boyle. Big hole up the middle to the 20. Still in his feet. Mustangs going for the football across the 15 to the 12. It's a gain of 15 and a first down. And in the red zone is Scott's Bluff. And Sebastian Boyle is now up to 85 yards. And again, the same guys are making the tackle. It's Ortega. It is David Keller. Tim Paxton will make some hits there. McCoy, but you need more. First and 10 for the Mustang, 12. Four yards behind center. The quarterback keeper running to his left. That's a nice play in the backfield. That's a heck of a play and a loss as making the hit was Daniel Serna, the senior, trying to run off left tackle, a loss of one for Stoll. But again, that's an individual tackle. No other Mustang was there. If Serna doesn't make the play, Stoll could have scored. Absolutely. Serna at that middle linebacker spot. Second down and... 11 from the 13, and this time handoff right up the gut. Boyle is dragged down, but across the 10, Levi McCoy has him at the 8. It's a gain of 5 for Sebastian Boyle, as Kevin mentioned, a sophomore. Yep, he's he's making a lot of his yardage after contact. That time he was hit almost right at the line, but he his momentum carried him forward 5 yards. The ball is just shy of the 7. Third down and a long 5 to go. Stoll runs to his right, and he's going to be dragged down from behind. Oh, that's an excellent play. Somebody shot out from the right side. I think Tim Paxton was there for a gain of about a yard. And McCoy as well. This will be an interesting call, Kevin, because now you've got fourth down. And you've got fourth and about a long three, a short four, just inside the Mustang six. A field goal ties the game, but Christian Fee, to close out the first half, missed a 20 three yarder and he missed it by a mile so they're going to go for it here with under four minutes to go in the third quarter and the Mustangs up 10 to 7 biggest play here of the third quarter fourth down and a short four from the six four yards behind center Stoll is going to roll out to his right still rolling he'll take off with a football he's going to be upended right near the first down marker but I think he's short I think he's short at the three yard line that would give the ball to the Mustangs yeah he's going to be well short in fact, looking at the side yep. judge here, it's a gain of three, and Fort Morgan's going to take over the ball. I think they might measure. They're going to call for a measurement, but Kevin, I have Ooh. no idea how he's going to get that first down unless they gave him a really favorable spot here. Right. It's just really hard to tell with the chains being a yard back. There's no the way. Thing. There's no way you get a first down out of that. I'd say they're going to stretch him out. You're he's right. A, he's a yard and a half short. <laughs> yeah, not even close. I don't even know why they measured. I mean, I could tell from here, and we're... <laughs> 70 yards away it feels like it great great defensive stand you know i was just thinking before they kick the field goal and they tie it it's kind of a, a defeat for them so they go for it but that's a bigger defeat to not make it after that nice drive the mustangs went 59 yards and got a 22 yard field goal scott's bluff went 62 yards and they're held a yard short of the first down marker so the mustangs have it with 3.47 to go, third quarter, leading Scotts Bluff on the road 10-7. The Mustangs have not trailed in this game. 
And it looks like Scott's Bluff, I believe, has called a timeout, but all three timeouts are still on the board on both sides. Yeah, the official marked uh, timeout on them, so I don't know what it was that they made, made them decide that they needed to give the kids a break and get some water. Premier Farm Credit understands production ag. They've been serving our rural communities for over 100 years in Sterling, Fort Morgan, Yuma, and Holyoke. That's Premier Farm Credit. No band tonight here and a much lesser crowd, but still pretty packed here at Scotts Bluff High School for this state-to-state -state opener between the Bearcats based in Nebraska and the Fort Morgan and Colorado Mustangs. Well, now they're going to have to chew up some time. Not chew up time, Kevin. Chew up some yardage because they've lost field position here. Absolutely. But that first drive, they waited until the official was waving his hand. So they were burning up the entire play clock. Even though they were up to the line, Scott's Bluff had to be ready. They just basically stood there and got the play. First and 10 for the Mustangs. They are at their own three-yard line. So Wheatley has a couple of feet in the end zone. Waiting the snap, Wheatley back to throwing the play action. Deep up the right side, the ball's gonna be caught! Holy Mahongas, what a catch by Fajardo! Oh, what a somersault there at about the 42 yard line. It's a gain of 39 and a first down for the Mustangs. And he was defended tightly, perfect throw and a spectacular grab. Yep, one, one play, we flipped the field and now we have uh, field position again. What a play that was. Waitley now over 100 yards through the air. After that, long pass of 39 yards. First and 10 at their own 42-yard line. Wow, that's a gutsy call and a perfectly executed play. And again, they're late in the play clock, run down as Kevin mentioned earlier. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. The play clock is sitting at five. And this time it'll be a quarterback keeper and Wheatley's hit after a yard. It was read beautifully, hit the ball in the gut of Ortega and then held on to it. The initial tackle was made by Jace Wilkinson. Also there, a couple of other Bearcats, second down and nine to go, just shy of the 43 yard line. And Wheatley hasn't broken off that play yet. Right. He can break one. Well, let's see again. They were trying to get what I mentioned earlier too, Kevin, the pass set up the run. Right. But uh, they elected to run there, but you still have a couple of downs to play with. Two and a half to go, third quarter. Fort Morgan 10, Scotts Bluff seven. Second down and nine for the 43 yard line. Wheatley play action. He's a deep up the left side. That's gonna be incomplete. At the 30 yard line, that looked like Jose Mosqueda. But man, he was covered by Jackson Ostick. No chance for a completion there. Third down, by the way, we have video footage of that Wheatley to Fajardo play. That'll be up on our KSIR B106 YouTube channel either later today or sometime early tomorrow. Big play coming up for the Mustangs. Third down and nine, but at least they have flipped the field at their own 43-yard line. They've got to get to the 48 of Scott's Bluff. Two receivers out to the left. Looks like they're coming with a blitz. And this will be an, a reverse coming right. Fajardo all types of running room to the 45. Now to the 50, back to the inside. And he's upended first down at the 48. Fajardo kind of wiggled his way and weaved his way to a gain of nine. And the Mustang drive continues as we approach the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Excellent play cause. He was basically running left to right, and the defense was going in the opposite direction. That one was kind of close, but the uh, head judge stepped in and said, no, we're going first down. We're not going to take time to measure it. You think they should have measured, right? Because I, I thought they would. I, I it, thought they right were getting there. ready to. The, the linesman who placed the ball was calling for a measurement. but First down and 10 for the Mustangs at the 48-yard line of Scotts Bluff. A minute 47 to go, third quarter. Fort Morgan 10, Scotts Bluff 7. Fajardo in motion to the right. And there's the option left. Wheatley keeps it himself to the 45. Wheatley snaps out of a tackle to 40. Along the left sideline to the 30. Wheatley nope. still on his feet. Flag. There's a late flag. And that's going to come back. He's going to gain some of the yardage. But that will be against Fort Morgan. He's down at about the 20-yard line, nullifying a 48-yard gain. But he will pick up some yardage because the penalty flag was thrown downfield. So this right. could be like a first and seven or eight situation, Kevin. Let's see how far down the field it was thrown. That right. would still give Wheatley some valuable yardage. Yeah. 
And I think the official, uh, obviously the coaches weren't very happy. The official, as soon as he threw his flag, walked over and stared down the Fort Morgan coaches who were all running away from him while yelling. They did not like the call, but. Well, the ball's at the 41-yard line. Okay, so that's a plus. gain of 17 for Briggs Wheatley in a 10-yard penalty. So now, <laughs> this is pretty good, Kevin. You've got a first and three. Right. They ought to be able to convert on this series. And again, the clock is still running. A minute 24 to go. Third quarter. First and three for the Mustangs. I'm not sure the penalty was on, but it was holding against Fort Morgan. They really don't reveal it at the high school level on an individual basis unless we see it, and it wasn't obvious from here. Maybe that's why the Fort Morgan bench was up in arms. Right. Out of the pistol, Ortega's right behind Briggs Wheatley. First and three, play action. Looks to throw, out to his right, incomplete. A diving attempt at the 40-yard line on the incompletion to Oscar Ramirez. And that's fine, you can waste that down because you have second and three. Still open up all types of possibilities. Right. But that play was kind of blown up from the beginning. He didn't have much time. The receiver was covered, and if he would have caught it, he would have only you know, gotten back to the line of scrimmage to begin with. So, Second down, and a long three just shy of the 41-yard line. Yeah, here, you're. I think you're definitely going to run the ball because at the very least, you get this clock down to about 25, 30 seconds by the time the next play commences. On second down, let's see if this is a give to Ortega. No play action to throw deep up the right side. Fajardo's out there, complete! Oh, a diving catch. Another beautiful play for the Mustangs. I think he's got the 11 there for a gain of 30. Wow, Fort Morgan's passing game picking up where it left off in the playoffs. And he had a really nice subtle push off there right towards the end to, to get him to that separation that you pretty much see in every college and pro play. And the uh, Scotts Bluff coach was complaining about it, but it wasn't flagrant enough to pull the flag. Kevin, this drive started at the Mustang three-yard line. Let's not forget that. That's right. It is first down and 10 at the 11. That's a pretty good spot to be in because you can still get a first down. With 31 seconds to go. The running back to Wheatley's left. And there is the keeper. Wheatley breaks out of a tackle at the 10. Running to his left along the sideline of the 5. Wheatley to the end zone. Yes! Touchdown! Briggs, Wheatley, Fort Morgan Mustangs. 11 yards away. And the Mustangs extend the lead. It is 16-7. to seven. And no flags. So that was really nice. Just good individual effort on his part to outrun the other kids to the corner and score. He just had that one defender to beat as soon as he got past the line of scrimmage. And now for a 10-point lead, big extra point coming up here for Brandon Marquez off the hold of Charlie Langford. The snap is perfect. The kick is up, and that kick is right down the middle. 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Mustangs just traveled 97 yards and got a 33-yard run from Fajardo. A 39, well, that actually was earlier. They got the 39-yard pass and a 30-yard to Fajardo. Two passes, 69 yards for Wheatley, both to Braden Fajardo, and both were excellent throws and phenomenal grabs. Right, and that one drive had more yards than Fort Morgan had in the entire first half. 89 yards in the opening half. So Kevin, now, this is why I thought, you know, you're thinking, we were in agreement with this. This gives Fort Morgan the advantage. You have yeah. this, this much time to prepare and... It always comes back to haunt you. You statistically dominate a team like they yep. did to Fort Morgan on Friday night. And now the Mustangs are doing that to Scotts Bluff. And Scotts Bluff has not thrown the ball well in this game. At some point, they've got to score on this drive because the game is getting real short for them, down by 10, with right. probably only one play left from scrimmage after this kickoff here in the third quarter. And I wasn't in any of the the coaches' meetings or the coaches' players' meetings for Scott's Bluff, but you got to believe that that was what they sold them on, was we dominated these guys. We're just going to come out and dominate them again. And you come out just a tad bit overconfident, and all of a sudden Fort Morgan says, no, we're going to smack you in the mouth and keep coming at you. We're not going to give in. And here we have a 10-point lead, and Fort Morgan's coaches have done a phenomenal job of finding the weaknesses in the Scott's Bluff defense. Two drives, 156 yards for the Mustangs. In this third quarter alone. Just the one holding penalty is the only... That's it. Brandon Marquez 
will boot that football high and a little bit shorter. Dostick at the 10-yard line, running to his left now to the 20, and he's going to be swallowed up there at about the 25-yard line, a return of 15 with 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter, and Fort Morgan up by 10. Alex Rivas made the hit for the Mustangs. Now you just have to prevent the big play, Kevin. That's you don't right. want them to score with nine minutes to go. If they're going to score, make it with about five or six minutes to go. Let them drive down the field if, if they score, and then you can eat up some clock and perhaps win it without Scott's Bluff getting the football back. That's right. First and 10 for the Bearcats at their own 25-yard line. They're realigning with a running back Boyle to the right of the quarterback. Braden Stoll, play action, looking to throw. Up the left sideline, the receiver's out there. It's incomplete. Jose Rodriguez defended by Fernando Marquez in front of the Scotts Bluff bench at the 48-yard line, second down and 10. And I cannot stress enough that this Scotts Bluff passing game, unfortunately for them and very fortunately for Fort Morgan, has been inept two out of 12 for 17 yards. Yeah. And I, and I may be a little biased, but I, I think if Fajardo was that receiver, he probably would have found a way to catch that because he's, yeah. he's really come a long way. He, he's been the real deal, not only tonight, but even last season. There is the keeper by Stoll. He's got a seam, breaking tackles, a first down, and he's dragged down across the 35 to the 38. It's a gain of 13. And the tackle was made by Aiden Derry. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter with the score. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 7 on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Start of the fourth quarter, Fort Morgan leads 17 to 7 and there is a false start. Are they going to call offsides on Fort Morgan? That was clearly a... No, no, no. There was movement there. Oh, man. I don't know about that. Kevin, what did you see there? I know Fort Morgan moved, but I thought the teams moved simultaneously. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. He's a little closer than us, so he probably saw the Fort Morgan kids starting to move and the other guy reacted to it. But there was definitely motion on both both lines. First and five. That's a offsides against the Mustangs. Scott's bluff at their own 43-yard line. Opening play now coming here in the fourth quarter. High snap. Handoff. Boyle up the middle. Huge hole across the 50 into the Mustangs secondary. And down at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of 10 and a first down as Lee Levi McCoy made the tackle and Sebastian Boyle is now up to 101 yards quickly up to the line of scrimmage for the 47 handoff on the end around to Rodriguez trying to get around the Mustang he cannot and that is Lee Levi McCoy making the hit right around the ankles and not letting go and the loss is back to the 50 yard line second down and 12 and that's the first time Rodriguez has been thrown for negative yardage. He had all types of big carries. Six, seven, nine, 15, 13 yards, but a minus two there. Yeah, just enough to make them maybe stop and think about what their next play is going to be. And Everybody bunched in tight. Option right. Stoll wants to run with the football to the wide side of the field at the 46, and then he's taken down out of bounds along the sideline, but he basically was pinballed along the sideline, still in bounds to the 40. A nice run of 10 yards. A Mustang didn't wrap up, but got him good at the 47-yard line. Yeah, need to get that head in front and wrap up and, and drive. Third down and two from the 40. Plenty of time to go in this game. 11:09. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 7. Rodriguez realigned. Sebastian Boyle, the running back to the right of the quarterback. This hand off to Boyle, up the middle. First down, grabbed around the ankles. Not a big gain. He needed two, and he got four to the 36-yard line. And let's see, they give them almost a 36. Nonetheless, they're right up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they can reclaim some momentum if they get into the end zone. First and 10 for the 36. The Mustang defense has not been broken. And the deep throw up the right side, and that's going to be nearly picked off by Fajardo. And Stoll was hammered as he threw the football. That was near the 10-yard line. Pass intended for Rodriguez. But, Kevin, if you saw that, the Mustangs got yeah. some pressure. Yeah, he, he got hit. And he, he's hurting. He is not feeling very well right now. Got hit right in the midsection right as he let go of that ball. Good defensive, clean defensive play by Fort Morgan. Second down and 10 to go from the 36-yard line. Not sure exactly who hit him. 
Out of the gun, handoff, Boyle up the middle, driving towards the 31 for a gain of five. Initial hit was made over there by Aiden Derry. Randall Paxton also in on the tackle. Third down and five to go from the 31. That was the 19th carry of the game for Sebastian Boyle. 10-18 to go in the game. Here is Stoll running to his left, back to the middle. First down, he spun down at about the 20, maybe the 19. It's a gain of 12. Again, the Fort Morgan Mustang defense could not neutralize him. And he gains 11 yards in the play. And the chain gang is sitting over there taking their time moving when the ref tells them to move as a home team chain gang should do I suppose if your team's behind 129 yards for Sebastian check that for the quarterback stole on 19 carries from the 20 this is running wide to the right is Sebastian Boyle and he's upended but not before he gets to about the 10 he's just following blockers Ortega makes the tackle but that's going to be a first and goal plenty of running room to the right yeah, they're, they're just doing a good job of just rushing up to the line and running the play. And you talked about using up some clock. They haven't used up very much. Nope, they advanced the ball to the eight, according to the scoreboard, with 9.43 to go. There's a quarterback keeper up the middle, but nothing doing. The Mustangs right there. Solid tackling there. And the first Mustang to grab the quarterback was Jesse Campa, the senior. The gain, I don't know how they give him the, the seven there. That looks like he... Uh, they're going to give him the seven for a gain of one. Second and goal. Plenty of time. 9.15 to go in the game on second and goal from the seven. Stoll is going to hand it off to Boyle running right. He's got very little, maybe to the five, perhaps the four. Good job but, by Timmy Paxton. Yep. Getting a hold of him and pulling him back. Tremendous play there. Camp around the football as well. A gain of three, but that was a hard three for Boyle. Third and goal. We're under nine minutes to go in the game. 17-7, Fort Morgan. They've scored 10 points in this half. On third and goal, Stoll hands it off to Boyle. Behind blockers to the end zone. Touchdown. Sebastian Boyle, four yards away. The Bearcats are on the board for the first time since the second quarter. With 8.41 to go in the game. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 13. Yeah, they scored a little bit too quickly for Fort Morgan's liking as that drive consumed just over three and a half minutes. Yeah, big uh, extra point here because if he misses this, then field goal's out of. And the extra point by Christian Fees is right down the center. 8.41 to go in the game. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 14 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Right down the field, an 80-yard drive. Scotts Bluff answers Fort Morgan's touchdown. Four-yarder by Sebastian Boyle. 8.41 to go in the game. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 14. Let's see if they squib it. They squibbed it in the third quarter, but this will be a line drive, and it's going to be fielded by Ortega at the 10, running straight to the 20, along the right sideline of the 25, and still going down near the 30-yard line. Not bad field position for Fort Morgan. Now... You can almost win this game if you score a touchdown, Kevin, because you force Scott's Bluff to pass, and their passing game has been non-existent. Right. However, if you don't do anything offensively, they don't even have to pass the ball. They can just keep it on the ground. That's right. Yeah, I think Fort Morgan has to have a goal of at least using up four or five minutes and uh, getting a lot of yardage. Scoring would be nice, but... Well, they lost in the playoffs last year, 17-16. Now they're up 17-14. Different type of game. And all the Mustangs, the offense is on the sideline. I'm not sure what the delay is all about. We've used that word delay in this game. Briggs Wheatley has his helmet off. There is a timeout, and it's given to Fort Morgan. Yeah, they need to catch their breath. A lot of those kids are going both ways, and after that big, long, punishing drive to go back out on offense, well, that's smart to use the timeout. Well, they only traveled 34. 34 players. They had many more here on Friday night. That roster on Friday night was more extensive, and 34 is a lot of players, but if some of them and many of them are going both ways, and they just had the ball run down the field on them, 
you do want to conserve some energy and you want to use those timeouts, and that's a smart move by head coach Ty Davies. Morgan Community College is here to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. That's Morgan Community College. And Fort Morgan had 156 yards of offense in the third quarter. <laughs> Nothing yet because this is their first play of the fourth. It was just over eight and a half to go. Chase Redding is out there. He's the punter. He has not punted in the second half, and that's a good sign. We don't want him to punt here either. But let's see if Scott's Bluff makes any adjustment. First and 10, Fort Morgan 70 yards away from perhaps reclaiming a 10-point lead. Monday night football here in Scott's Bluff. Wheatley awaits the snap. He's going to keep it himself right up the middle, and he's got an ankle tackle right there by the defender, but not till he gets to the 34 as he tried to scoot his way out of that one. Second down and six to go, and a pretty good read there by Briggs Wheatley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if he could have just gotten out of that ankle tackle, he might have had a few more yards. At the 34-yard line. When the ball is snapped, we'll be under eight minutes to go in the game. If they can give it to Scott's Bluff with three to four minutes to go without scoring, hopefully if they score, it doesn't matter when Scott's right. Bluff gets it back. But without scoring, then Scott's Bluff doesn't necessarily have to run the ball, but it would create a sense of urgency. Second down and six from the 34. Wheatley this time will hand it off to Ortega. Jitterbugging his way. First down right up the middle across the 40. Nice blocking to the 43-yard line. A gain of nine for Frank Ortega getting up slowly, but he took a little bit of a hit there. The Scott Bluff tackler was, looks like Michael Thrash, the junior, made the hit. Frank Ortega only with his fifth carry of the game for 26 yards. More importantly, the clock is moving. 7.25 to go. Fort Morgan 17, Scotts Bluff 14. The Mustangs at their own 43-yard line. Two receivers split out to the left, one to the right from the pistol formation, which means Ortega is right behind his quarterback, Wheatley. Perfect snap. There's the deep handoff. Ortega across the left side of the 50, along the sideline of the 40, back to the middle to the 35. Ortega has got the right sideline to the 20. Ortega to the 18. Now he stops. He cuts it back, and he spun down, breaking tackles. Touchdown. He should have been down at about the 10. Frank Ortega's pulled off a tremendous run, 57 yards. His second touchdown of the game. Holy mahungas. And the Mustangs lead 23 to 14. Yes. Kevin Rohde, how did he do that? Uh, you know, personal effort. And he had a lot of blockers downfield. I don't know if you noticed, but there was like five or six guys running with him the whole time. And he used them as interference and turned back. And they all did a good job of not blocking in the back or holding. That was just, but that was 100% personal effort. Too. Kevin, he ran 57 yards forward and about 25, 30 yards laterally. That was unbelievable. What great vision there by... Frank Ortega and the Mustangs looking to go up 10 points here. Low snap, the kick is up, and that baby is right there by Brandon Marquez. 6.52 to go from Scotts Bluff. Fort Morgan 24, Scotts Bluff 14 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Three plays, 70 yards. Frank Ortega from 57 yards out with a spectacular run. And the Mustangs lead 24 to 14 with 6.52 to go in the game. And the kickoff here is coming from Brandon Marquez. Got to keep them back like inside their 35 at the worst. That's high along the left sideline, fielded at the 12. That's Rodriguez. It looks like it might be Ostic. It is Ostic. Across the 30 to the 33. A helmet goes flying. That's a Mustang helmet, I believe. Nope, it's a Scotts Bluff helmet. A return of 22 yards. Still plenty of time here. Again, if they score quickly, as they did on their previous drive, the Mustangs would have it with about three to three and a half minutes to go. That's why Fort Morgan has got to make at least just one play defensively. And if they hold them off the board here, the game is over. Oh, absolutely. Scott's Bluff has to at least get three and preferably seven so that they can maybe kick a field goal to tie it towards the end and go to overtime. But we're not going to let that happen. Fort Morgan's going to make him go two, three plays for every first down. There's the give to Boyle running right, utilizing the sideline to the 35 behind some blockers across the 40 to the 41. Man, it's just a great blocking. A gain of eight. Daniel Serna 
makes the initial tackle for Fort Morgan, but Sebastian Boyle is racking up some huge yards. That was his 23rd carry of the game. And let's see, 80, 91, 101, uh, 137 yards on 23 carries unofficially. Second down and three to go, just shy of the 41. Pass out in the left flat. It's caught by Austin. Cuts it back towards the middle. Reverses his field across the 45. And the clock will stop. It's a first down, a gain of seven to the 48-yard line. Only the third completion for Braden Stoll. And that was an easy one. And there's oh, a flag, flag down. And that's going to be a hold against uh, Scott's Bluff. I didn't see that, Kevin. That'll nullify that pass. Yeah, it'll actually end up being a loss of yardage. They'll end up with... About second and seven instead of second and three. Uh, is the hold at the end of the play? It was just out there on the receiver that was, you know, out front. Yeah, but they're walking it off. Yeah, it was from like the 10. or the Almost from the end of the play. Yeah. Well, now it makes it a second down. And let's see, they got to get to the second and eight for the 35. So it was downfield, two receivers out to the left, one to the right, stole, three-step drop. It's going to heave it up the right side, and that's going to be incomplete through the hands of Rodriguez, but it was nearly out of bounds. Jose Mosqueda got turned around a little bit, but that's a tough pass to throw. you got to utilize the middle of the field, and that's one thing that this Scotts Bluff offense hasn't done. Everything is up the sideline when they're throwing the football. Right, and there again, that pass was right where it needed to be, and that kid just let it go right through his hands. So I, I think, you know, we talked earlier about their passing game not being as good because the quarterback, but I don't think the receivers are at the caliber of ours as well. Third down and eight for Scott's Bluff at their own 35. Mustangs looking for a defensive play. Pressure coming up the middle. Set up a screen. It's batted down. Incomplete. Oh, a Mustang came right through the middle and was able to bat it down. That might have been Paxton. Oh, that was a tremendous play, Kevin, because they set up a screen in the first half last Friday that went for big yardage. Now you're a fourth and eight. You've got no option here but to go for it. Right. You, you don't have enough time with 549 on the clock. You've got to get a first down here. Fort Morgan, one big play. Just hold them to less than eight yards, and the game should be yours. With 549 to go, Fort Morgan up by 10. Two receivers split out to the right. Fourth down and eight for Scott's Bluff at their own 35. Rolling right of Stoll, still rolling. Throws in the run. The pass is incomplete off the left hand of the intended receiver no at the 45-yard line. No flags. And there are no flags. And that was intended for Trevor Schwartz, a senior, a tight end. And Fort Morgan has incredible field position. And they've done exactly what they needed to do on defense. Not only did Scott's Bluff not move the ball down the field, they didn't even pick up a first down. Nope. And... I know this would be unconventional, but I'd almost do a play action, toss it to Fajardo going down the sideline because they they know we got it. We're going to run. <laughs> well, you're right. You score a touchdown, it's over. But I think conventional wisdom is going to be let's just punch it down and get as many yards as we can, kick it into the end corner of the field if we need to, and make them go. Again, Fort Twice. Morgan was outgained by over 100 yards in the opening half on Friday. Unofficially, 200. And I believe I had, yeah, 226, 226 yards of offense in this half, including a 97-yard drive. And, I mean, Fort Morgan, quite frankly, Kevin, can't play any better. No. Can't play any better. Where's Brian Nickel? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't witness this. You now, mean, Brian, I'm mean, sure I'm going to get a text anytime soon here. You mean bad news, Brian? I, I get, I guess, at least for tonight. <laughs> I mean, you show up, and all of a sudden, this team <laughs> is a machine. First and 10 for the Mustangs at the 35 of Scott's Bluff. 545 to go in the game. And they've had some huge plays, a lot of huge plays. Two long passes to Fajardo, the 57-yard run by Ortega. Fajardo had a 33-yard run in this half. Ortega to the left of the quarterback. Briggs Wheatley. They're going to come on a blitz, it looks like. Man in motion to the left is Fajardo. He's got the handoff. Stay in bounds. Fajardo along the sideline. Cuts it back now. Back to the outside. He's out of bounds, however. Picks up big yardage near the first down marker. It'll yeah. be down at about the 26, maybe, Kevin? Yeah, it's, it's just a little short. 
They're looking at it. But I'm thinking that call was awful close. He tried to stay in bounds, and he landed right close to that line. But well, Braden had so much running room to the outside, he decided, you know what? Oh, yeah. I better just go ahead and utilize the sideline there, pick up some extra yards, even though it's better that they run some clock. But, man, this, he's done. What a, what a game. Three yeah. carries for 51 yards all in this half. Second down and one from the 26. The clap of the hands by Briggs Wheatley. They can let the play clock run down, but the clock is stopped anyway. The big clock. This will be a quarterback keeper, and Wheatley is spun down. However, he's got a first down right off right tackle to the 23-yard line, a gain of three, and that will move the clock. And all of a sudden, Briggs Wheatley, who couldn't run the football at all in the opening half, on his last four carries, has 35 yards and a touchdown. And would have had more if not for that holding penalty. Right, and they probably won't have to start this play until the clock's under five minutes. Right now it reads 518, Fort Morgan 24, Scotts Bluff 14. On a Monday night in Scotts Bluff, this game was tied at seven at halftime when the lightning delay hit. And Fort Morgan has come out with some electricity here in this one. Awaiting the snap. There is Wheatley keeping himself off the fake to Ortega. He dives to the 22. Scotts Bluff calls their first timeout. Jace Wilkinson made the hit. It's a gain of one for Briggs Wheatley. So were you saying that maybe the uh, lightning storm charged Fort Morgan up to play a little bit better? You know, if, if you and I want to go back and forth in the puns, you know, <laughs> we can do it, but you're right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's what happened. Yeah, the Mustangs, all of a sudden, the offense didn't have much, and they lit up here in right. the uh, second half. Right. I mean, it's a, a literal Frankenstein movie with the lightning striking and Frankenstein rising from, you know. No. All right. Back to football. That was. Yeah, no. I, I think we're getting desperate now. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Scott Bluff's going to have to continue to use his timeouts on defense, which just makes them have to throw that much more when they get back on offense. Now for the Mustangs, we've got a second down and nine for the 22-yard line. 4.56 to go in the game. Scott's Bluff has two timeouts remaining. Fort Morgan is up. 24 to 14 with some incredible displays of offense here in the second half. Looking to win their regular season opener. If they pick up a first down, then Scott's Bluff is in real trouble. From the 22, there's the give to Ortega, running off left tackle inside the 20. Stood up at the 19. We should have the second timeout called by Scott's Bluff after the gain of three. Frank Ortega now has 86 yards on seven carries. All right, while they go through that timeout, let's take a short break with the Mustangs up 24 to 14 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. <laughs> All right, for the Mustangs, they've got a third down and about seven to go at the 20-yard line. Awaiting the snap is Wheatley. Wheatley, option right. He will pitch it to Ortega, swinging it to the outside of the 15. Ortega to the 10. He barrels into a defender. It's a first and goal for the Mustangs, and that was a perfectly run play. It gets down to about the five, maybe the six-yard line. And Frank Ortega looks like he's got... The six yard line there for a gain of 14, Kevin executed perfectly. Yeah, that was just a nice option and really held it till the last minute, forced that defensive end to take him on and pitch the ball and Frankie skilled his way around the corner and ended up getting some good yards. First and goal for the Mustangs with the six yard line. Now the clock reads 419 and Scott's Bluff does have a timeout and that's it. Mustangs looking to get back into the end zone. Wheatley awaits the snap. This time we'll hand it off to Ortega running off right tackle and he drives inside the five to the four for a gain of two. Second down and goal. No timeout taken by Scott's Bluff and that's almost better Kevin. Don't get into the end zone too quickly. That's right. Scott's Bluff saving their last timeout probably for some time on the offense but we'll just let the clock run and 
take all the time that they have. All right, second down and goal from the four. Let's see, the Mustangs punch it in right now. Ortega's got two touchdowns tonight. There's a snap. Wheatley's going to run to his left. Running room to the outside, towards the pylon, he dives, touchdown, it should be a touchdown, it is! Briggs Wheatley extended his right arm inside the pylon, four yards away, Fort Morgan 30, Scott's Bluff 14, Kevin Rohde, tell me about this performance in the second half. That was just fantastic. Another good play where Wheatley just knew that he could get to that corner and then at the last minute dove for that pylon. and. It's a game of inches at that point, and he got in just right at the pylon. Amazing. The Mustangs, a short drive there, only 35 yards, but they scored on every drive, 261 yards of total offense, and the extra point is up and good. 3.20 to go in the game. Fort Morgan 31, Scottsbluff 14 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 3.20 to go in the game. Fort Morgan leads 31-14. to 14. That kick along the sideline, and it's fielded over there by a Scottsboro Bearcat and getting loose across the 40. Let's see who that is. Near the Fort Morgan bench to about the 41, a return of about 20. And that is uh, Tyron Shanks. And the Mustangs off the four-yard touchdown run by Briggs Wheatley. Lead by a score of 31 to 14. And I don't want to say I'm shocked, Kevin, but this has been perfectly executed football by Fort Morgan on offense. Yeah, they have. And it, it hasn't really been mistakes on Scott's Bluff's, Scott's Bluff's part to, to keep us in it either. Let's see, the Scott's Bluff call their last time out. No, Fort Morgan. Well, that's a good idea. They just want to keep the Scott's Bluff offense out of rhythm. The Mustangs were up 17 to 14 as Sebastian Boyle scored, and then Fort Morgan responded, a 57-yard touchdown run by Frank Ortega, his second touchdown of the game. Briggs Wheatley with a four-yarder after he scored earlier from 11 yards away. I mean, Kevin, who do you expect to get it done? Wheatley, Ortega, Fajardo, those three have been spectacular. Fernando Marquez, heck of a player. They haven't even needed him tonight, and when they get him involved, it's even a more dangerous offense. Yeah, and I think this is giving a little bit of confidence to that offensive line as they get to go up against a pretty stout defense and show that they can handle it. Right past the top of the hour, this is Morgan County's B106, KPRB brush Fort Morgan. First and 10 for Scott's Bluff at their own 41-yard line. Back to throw his stole, out to his left, it's caught underneath. Back to the middle, along the sideline, getting out of bounds. Fort Morgan doesn't want that. That's a gain of about seven. And that pass was caught by Mason Kinsey. Fernando Marquez makes the hit. But again, you want that clock to keep moving. On second down and three from the 41. I think they're setting up a screen, rolling to his right. Pressure coming. Stole along the sideline. First down out of bounds in Fort Morgan territory. And let's see, runs to the 45, maybe the 46. It's a gain of... We'll call it seven yards. You don't want this game to slow down with under three minutes to go. And the Mustangs up by 17. From the 45, two receivers split out to the left, one to the right. On first and 10, the clock has not stopped after a play. Fort Morgan needs a couple of those. There's the end around, running right. That's Ostick along the sideline, still on his feet. He goes out of bounds. Fort Morgan is not containing the Scotts Bluff offense very well. The gain is close to 10. And now Fort Morgan, well, they don't have a timeout left. Riggs Wheatley, I believe, ran him out of bounds. Yep, gain of 10 for Jackson Ostick. Kevin, all you need is two or three plays. Keep him in bounds. That's right. If you can catch him one time in bounds, that would really hurt him. Uh, the chain gang there accidentally had the chain break, surprisingly, and give him a little bit of time to catch their breath. All right, Kevin's claiming a conspiracy there, or something. First and 10, lining up on the right hash mark. 2.53 to go in the game. 
Scott's Bluff football on the Fort Morgan side of the field. Braden Stoll back to throw, pumping, looking, rolling out to his right. He's got all types of running room throws, incomplete along the sideline to the 23-yard line. That Mustang secondary defending very well. Looks like Shanks was the intended receiver. It will be second down, but again, the clock stops. All we want to do is get out of here pretty quickly, but this will extend the game quite a bit, despite the fact Fort Morgan's up by 17. One timeout remaining for the Bearcats. Second down and 10 for the Mustang, 35. Back to throw, out in the right flat, caught underneath, and breaking out of a tackle and spinning to about the 28-yard line, but staying in bounds as the tackle was made over there by Xander Gleam, it looks like. Tyson Klein made the catch, his second catch of the game. Third down and four yards to go with that football at the 30. There's the give, right side, first down for Klein. To the 22, a gain of eight. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Scott's Bluff's not going away. They are not going away. You can hear this crowd pick it up that much more. First and 10 from the 23 yard line. Two receivers to the left. Stall pumping, heaving a deep left side. It's gonna be caught underneath. The Mustangs broke down there defensively. Nobody was out there. Wheatley caught up late. But that was caught by Mason Kinsey and the game to the 10. Well, all of a sudden, they're picking things up. Fort Morgan playing some loose defense. There's rolling to his right as Stoll, throwing into the end zone, incomplete, broken up at the goal line. Yeah, you can't have a flag there. That There's no way that ball is going to be caught. Second down and goal at the 10. Minute 48 to go. You'd like the defense, Kevin, to be a little bit better. Well, yeah, I, I'm hearkening back to the days of the Dallas Cowboys bend but don't break, and, 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 and they're giving that ball, giving them the, underneath without giving the over the top. But yeah, I, I'd like to see a big sack or a big stop right here. Well, again, Scott's Bluff has one timeout remaining. If they score, they're going to onside kick it. You know that, but they're down by three scores. That's why those extra points you talked about are huge because there's no two touchdowns and two extra points. That's not going to get them back in the game. Second down and goal from the 10, a minute 48 to go. And this will be a give on the right side along the sideline. That's going to be Klein. He's got very little. The Mustangs with some tremendous containment along the outside. And Jose Mosqueda made a big hit at the nine-yard line, a gain of one. Third down and goal. That's a heck of a play by Mosqueda. They'll call it the eight, but we're down to a minute 21 to go. Third and goal. Man in motion to the right. There's the handoff along the right side, cutting it back towards the middle. And is he out of bounds? I think, did he go out of bounds? And that might have been Klein again, but he stayed in bounds at about the six, maybe the five yard line. It's almost like Scott's Bluffs just uh, accepted their fate because they're not even rushing up to the line. They're just rushing the ball, playing their game, figuring they lost. Here we go. We'll do a quick recap right after this is over. 48 seconds to go. Fourth and goal for the six. Still over the middle. Incomplete. Batted away by Wheatley at the goal line. And Fort Morgan takes over. They will take a knee, and the Mustangs will come away with a 31-14 victory. And the passing game really hurt this team tonight. And even on Friday night, when you consider that Braden Stoll was 5 out of 20 for 44 yards, the running game was efficient. But the Mustangs will take a knee. What a performance by Fort Morgan on a Monday night outscoring this Scotts Bluff team on their home field 24 to seven in the second half. Fajardo is several yards deep into the end zone as the safety valve. Wheatley backs up two steps, takes a knee. Why is Scotts Bluff calling timeout? What? It, are you kidding me? Hey, there's people laughing in the step. Kevin, help me. I 
I cannot explain that one at all, um, other than he just wants to maybe have a moment to talk to his kids and say, you know, you played hard. Yeah, they could do hard. that after the game. Well, they could, but they don't have to drive two hours home. I mean, come on, that is, that's the most ridiculous thing I've seen. I, I agree. I mean, that is ridiculous to call a timeout there. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm done with sugarcoating. I mean, that is, that is crazy. No need to call a timeout there. You're down by 17 and the other team has the ball. <laughs> what is that? Oh, I thought I saw it on Friday night. Okay, now you have no timeouts left. And guess what Fort Morgan's going to do with the ball on the three-yard line? Wheatley, under center, is going to take a knee. And now Scott Spluff can't do anything. And that's going to be the end of the game. Fort Morgan Mustangs defeat the Scott Spluff Bearcats 31-14. to Let's get to the, well, one more snap. Are they going to have to do that again? Okay. Either way. Let's not waste any time, Kevin. Let's get to the Mustang Post Game Show, which tonight is brought to you by Morgan Community College, here to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. We came into tonight with a game tied at 7 based on Friday's action. And then the Mustangs drove down the field, got a 22-yard field goal by Brandon Marquez to make it 10-7. to And then, after an incredible 97-yard drive, Briggs Wheatley scored from 11 yards out. Sebastian Boyle countered on a four-yarder for Scott's Bluff to make it 17-14. Then Fort Morgan completely took control from there. Frank Ortega with a 57-yard run for a touchdown. And then Briggs Wheatley with a four-yarder. The Mustangs had 89 yards of offense in the opening half, and in the second half, 261 yards for a total of 350 yards of total offense. Scott's Bluff did move the ball, there's no question about it. As the quarterback, Braden Stoll had 137 yards in the ground, and then you had the running back there, Boyle. He had Actually, Boyle had 137, but Stoll had 129 yards. So between those two, 266 yards. But again, they were one-dimensional, Kevin. And the Mustangs proved, especially after that big run by Frank Ortega, that they were a multi-dimensional offense. Yeah, you just can't give enough credit to the Fort Morgan coaches for getting these kids ready after having the disappointment of last Friday night of having to go home without the victory and then having to travel all the way back up here and to face a team that is physically dominating to come out here and play the way they did at you know, both sides of the ball. Just kudos to the coaching staff, kudos to the kids. I, I think. Did you enjoy it? I, I think this is going to be a really fun season. Um, not that I didn't think it was going to be before, but I, I thought it was going to be a little closer tonight, I guess would be my you know, synopsis on that. So, yeah, Fort Morgan is going to enjoy that two-hour bus ride home. I'll enjoy my uh, two-hour ride home with Mr. Beltran as well. Well, Briggs Wheatley was only 5 of 14 passing, but for 167 yards, and he had that touchdown to Ortega from 70 yards. Fajardo had a big game, three catches for 82 yards, also had that 33-yard run. Just a dominant performance by Fort Morgan in the second half, outscoring Scott's Bluff 24-7 in the final 24 minutes and winning the game 31-14. For Kevin Rohde and Brian Nickel, who was with me on Friday for the opening half, I'm John Beltran. The final score, once again tonight from Scott's Bluff, the Fort Morgan Mustangs defeat the Bearcats 31-14. to And you heard it all right here on B106, B106.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.